The UFC is back in the land of gazelles, Abu Dhabi, for the 17th visit. Tomorrow night, fight fans in the Middle East will be treated to a blockbuster of an event featuring a whole host of contenders, plus, of course, two UFC title bouts. The stunning golden shell of the Etihad Arena is the perfect structure under which the UFC belts will be contested. The stage is all set for the official UFC 280 weigh-ins to begin as about 15 minutes before some of the finest fighters in the world step on the scale. Good morning. My name is John Gooden. Welcome to the weigh-in show and look at my panel of analysts. <laughs> First up, of course, the woman that wears all the hats so for the hats. UFC. So many hats. Laura Sanko. She's going to be hats. commentating with me on Road to UFC as well. I this am. Weekend. I am. Looking forward to that. Yeah, <laughs> shameless plug. But you guys, you know, there's something else happening other than UFC 280 this weekend. Of course, a man that has wowed crowds here in Abu Dhabi, Paul Felder. Hey. Looking strapping over there. Hall of Famer, Daniel DC Cormier. What are you the land, the, the land of gazelles, Abu Dhabi. I mean, what are we doing here, guys? The land of gazelles, I did not, Abu Dhabi. I did not know. I, I did mean, not know. What do you mean, the land of gazelles? The land does Listen, research. I'm just, I'm just doing research. Can you hold that thought? The land of sweaty because armpits is what we it can is. all. We're talking of being sweaty. <laughs> talking of being sweaty, we can all breathe a little sigh of relief because guess who's first in the queue? I can guess. To I weigh can... in. Go on. Islam and Charles. <laughs> There we have wow. it. I'm so smart, good sometimes guess. I surprise myself. Wow. What a guess, right? That's... What a guess. It's looking good. <laughs> Childs will be first on the scale. Islam Makhachev will be second on the as, scale. As the champion should go first, right? They say the champion has a name, and his name is Charles Oliveira. He yeah. said it time and time again. He gets the honors of stepping on the scale first. But after Phoenix, this is very good news for everyone watching because we will have an official... UFC lightweight championship yeah, th fight. Yeah, thank God. Thank yeah, God, because we don't want to go so through all that. Yeah, we, with the scale drama and everything yeah. that went on. He's first as well, Laura. That's a statement right there. I mean, that's a statement by Charles Oliveira to get up there, be first, and basically throw a giant middle finger to that scale. Well, last night, yeah. last night two, I was... Maybe two middle fingers. Maybe yeah. two. Well, last <laughs> night I was in the, the weight cut room in the weight cut area with Islam and the rest of the guys, right? Went to say hi, hi to him, and I heard a, an explosion. Of music. And it was yes, it was when Charles Oliveira had made weight last night, and yeah. we have seen the pictures now. We have seen the pictures online. We have seen people celebrate him, like saying he was on weight nine hours ago. But I heard it like down there because though, as those guys were getting going, Charles Oliveira was getting done with I'm the weight cut. Just getting a little bit more intel. O'Malley and uh, Peter Yan are in the line as well. There we so go. Way in early. I mean, we just things are, things this are is looking good. going to be a smooth but show. Still, still, no, still no needed, Sterling right? and, and TJ yet. Still no Sterling and TJ quite yet. So okay. we're still. All right, Paul. Hey, look at the great day. I don't want everybody hey, to Halloween. Hey, Halloween. Hey, Halloween. Hey, hey, everybody's like excited. Here comes the Halloween Grinch. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't unclench your buttholes quite yet, okay, guys? Hang in there. We uh, still, we got still, we got like a little drama. We still got some going on here. All right, we'll did hold you those thoughts for just a second. <laughs> <laughs> shall we have a look at what we got going on? Uh, yes, shall. Yes, All right, well, let's look at, let's pull up the prelims then, shall we? And we kick off with women's bantamweights, Lena Landsberg and Carol Hosa. Undefeated flyweight Mo Mikhaev faces the informed Canadian Malcolm Gordon. Late in the prelims, it's big business at 205 with DC's old friend, the number eight ranked Erzdemir, taking on the number 10 Nikita Krilov. Featured bout is, a, is another top of the card, a top of the tree affair with time at 170 with perhaps Paul Felder's old friend Bala Mohammed after Philly comments. He takes on the undefeated Sean Brady, but we do have a fight that's missing out of that list. We were supposed to be seeing Zubai Rata Hugo facing Lucas Almeida. You can imagine the mood in the room when we were told this morning that there were some issues and that was disappearing. Thankfully, we brought you some other good news, but that sucks for those guys, of course. Hopefully, we get that sorted out down the line. Now, onto the fully loaded main card, and French MMA is looking increasingly strong at the top with Manon Fierro taking on the seemingly unshakable flyweight number one contender, Caitlin Chukagian. Now, Gamrot Dariush is a hell of a fight, as is mm. former champ Piotr Jan versus surging superstar Sean O'Malley. And then we get into the title fights with Aljamain Sterling looking to defend his title against the former champ TJ Dillashaw. And topping the card, 
It's two men with double-digit win streaks. Charles Oliveira versus Islam Makachev for the undisputed lightweight championship. Time now to chat to the man who will be leading the broadcast tomorrow, Mr. John Anik J.A. Good morning. Morning, guys. Sounds like you're having a lot of fun over there. I will be there <laughs> shortly, but it's great to see everybody. And uh, we're ready to go. You know, some people took issue with me saying at the press conference yesterday that Charles Oliveira and Islam Makhachev are two of the best lightweights in UFC history. But how many lightweights in this ruthless division have put a double-digit winning streak on paper? Tony Ferguson has done it. Khabib Nurmagomedov has done it. These two guys have done it. I can't think of anybody else. So this is as big a fight, as significant a fight as we can put together at 155 pounds. And uh, one more sleep. Yeah, I I agree with you. Yeah, I don't know how anybody could even argue with you uh, yeah. there, John. I don't know why anybody would dispute that statement, buddy. Yeah. Well, for, In, first up, John, how good is it to see that lineup of characters looking to hit the scale? And how are they looking? Give us an idea. No, everybody looks great. Alexander Volkanovsky is also here. I'm not sure that he's necessarily going to be needed here on Saturday night, but... It's hard to not lean into the promotional hyperbole when you have a fight card like this and people talk about it in such glowing terms. Like, this is as good a fight card as we can put on paper. And thankfully, it is all held together. There's some heat on a lot of these matchups with Sean Brady and Bilal Muhammad, TJ Dillashaw and Aljamain Sterling. A lot of friction there as well. And nothing better than a championship doubleheader live on pay-per-view. So um, the hay is almost in the barn. We're almost ready to go. Yeah, well, well, on that point, then, you're saying it's maybe one of the, the biggest cards that you've maybe even seen ever. And, and we've, we've had the insight to your pay-per-view open. Do you have to sharpen the pencil a little bit more for this one? You know, it's a good question. Certainly when I'm trying to attack a main event like this that is so significant, I want to try to have some shine on both athletes. I haven't thought much about what happened in Charles Oliveira's last fight in terms of it not being a title defense, but pay-per-view open has not been written right now. Kind of wanted to see how things played out today, but um, I'm excited to bang keys tonight, and that's not always the case, so we're ready to go. <laughs> has there ever been a bigger spotlight for bantamweights than this card? And I mean, if you can start us off with the omalley Peter Yan fights. Yeah, I mean, this is a mini Bantamweight tournament. I think it has only been bolstered by the fact that Dana White has all but guaranteed that the winner between Piotr Jan and Sean O'Malley is going to fight the winner of Aljamain Sterling and TJ Dillashaw. And when we spoke with Piotr Jan in our fighter meeting, he certainly sees a lot of merit and upside in accepting the Sean O'Malley fight, despite the discrepancy in the rankings. For Piotr Jan, he's the number one contender. He understands the drawing power of a Sean O'Malley, and he feels like if he can beat anybody in this division as the number one contender, that he will get a championship opportunity, and that certainly dovetails with Dana White's opinion. So, huge night for 135-pounders as a whole. And for Aljamain Sterling, as we talk about the greatest bantamweights of all time, I understand people don't always want to have that conversation when careers are active, but go look at Aljo's body of work. If he adds an eighth straight win and it comes against TJ Dillashaw, he's closing fast on D. Cruz for the uh, greatest bandweight of all time, at least in my opinion. Lovely stuff. Great to talk with you, J.A. You have work to do. We will let you continue with that. We'll catch up with you a little bit later, sir. News just Thank in. You guys. Number three and number four in the queue. Sterling. Is there? Now I can relax. Dillashaw is <laughs> now there. I can relax. Now you can unclench Paul. Yeah, like, unclench Paul. Paul like, oh, he just. Hey, you don't want me to unclench that bad. Hey, Laurie. Oh, wow. He literally oh, wow. just I've lifted up and had a morning coffee, and you know, uh, I still haven't been to the toilet, so be careful. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to come over to this RJ. side. Thanks, RJ. This yes. side of the yes. studio right now, Laura. Let's talk some sensible stuff, shall we? All of this talk over here with this guy. <laughs> that main event, Charles oh Oliveira and Islam Makhachev. I've, got, I've gotten the feeling that these guys are fighting for more than the gold belt this weekend. I think there's so much more on the line. I, you know, when you, when you talk about this fight, it's interesting to me that Habib has been interwoven into this conversation so much. He is such a presence in this matchup, and you really get that sense that... It, Charles is not just fighting Islam. He's fighting the legacy mm -hmm. of Habib. So it makes this fight even bigger than it already would have been on paper already. I mean, this whole entire card makes you just want to grab this chair. It's so exciting. Punch yeah, it's, it. it's a tremendous <laughs> fight card and headlined by the most exciting guy in the UFC, Charles Oliveira, fighting against his most dangerous challenge in this time, Mahachev. So yeah. I can't wait. Can't wait. Right. Time now to get the weigh-in started. We will send it back to our good friend, John Anik.
Well, this makes it even more dramatic, doesn't it? We're not quite ready across town at the official weigh-ins. So, you get to see us guys yes. <laughs> a little bit more. Come on back, stick around. We, we've got plenty to talk about. Um, one thing that we didn't mention was just the posse that both of these main event guys oh, yeah. have come with. Like, they have come in rolling deep. I mean, and it's such a... A big visual with uh, Charles Oliveira. And anyway, we're going to come back to that because uh, <laughs> he's JA with the official weight. UFC lightweight champion Charles Dubronx Oliveira. Do you hear me? Yeah, here? you can hear the posse now. He's got some great energy, man. All week mm -hmm. he's had great energy. He looks good. He was angry. Is this mixture of. I asked him yesterday. 154 and a half, the official weight go. for Charles Oliveira. I asked Du Bronx yesterday, I interviewed him for my YouTube channel, if it was personal. He said yes. He was disrespected by the, by the Islam Makhachev team, from the coaches to Habib to Islam himself. It feels like they've been dismissive of All right, him. Next fighter and to he the feels scale like he's going to run. He's going to knock him out in the first round. Yes. Yes. Did you just plug your YouTube channel again? Oh, I, I did. Can we do shot? No, we're not doing shots on this show, but next time we do a show, we need to do shots every time he talks. Here's your boy, DC. Can I just say, Charles Oliveira, 154.5, sprinted off the stage. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. carried off. No, my, my boy Islam Mahashev will not, not be sprinting, sprinting he's off the stage. He's a big guy, but he makes the weight. Last night when I showed up to the weight cut, I went to talk to him a little bit. And he was five kilos over starting. Nine o'clock. 154 and a half, the official Nine, weight for yeah. Islam yep. Makhachev. 9 p.m. And, and with that, goes, your UFC lightweight I am not worried at all. He goes, this guy's a professional. He's going to get the weight off. Because I was like, hey, man, this, this is a lot. Five kilos. No problem, brother. I promise this guy will get the weight off. He's a pro. He'll make the weight. Wants to be champion. All right, I believe this is the best the fight the UFC can put on in it's any weight. Five yeah. kilos, Number 12 pounds, is that? 11. 11. Uh, by the way, we will have an undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world the tomorrow. Finally. There. I will not buy into this. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Carol Hosa, Laura, take it away. Listen, Carol Hosa has had a very impressive UFC run. She's gone four and one, and she is so much fun to watch. She is a high-volume, high-aggression striker. I'm going to pause here and let's see what she's weighing. 135, the official weight for Carol Hosa. Right on the dot for Carol Hosa. That, this is going to be a banger. Her and Lena Landsberg are going to go toe-to-toe mm -hmm. -to -toe and just absolutely throw down. Not a ton of finishes, but I'm telling you, very, very exciting fighter to watch. Well, you know, so, John, you kind of lied to her. She said TJ and Aljo would be third and fourth. Not John's fault. What? Well, John, uh -oh. okay, okay, okay. Clenched. I'm clenched. Paul had to re-clinch. I'm clenching. <laughs> <laughs> RJ, I'm clenching. Here comes uh, Francis. Manon, Manon Firo, there's been a little delay in this fight for various different reasons. Of course, we would love to have her, love to have seen her in Paris, but she gets a big spot here on the pay-per-view card. Yeah, that's unfortunate she didn't get to fight in Paris. Was it crazy there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 125 and a half, the yeah, official the weight was, for Manon Fior. Really, I yeah. bet. 125 and a half. I, got to, I saw some great footage of her sparring a 155 pro boxer, two knockdowns in the same round. All right, next saw fighter to the scale back for the judo, first time in a, a while. A national judoka. She's got it everywhere. Super she's power. Power. aggressive. She's, she's very good. Daryush. Benny? Benil Daryush. Listen, we talk about some of these great lightweights and obviously headlined by Islam and Charles, but Benil is right there in the mix. Mm -hmm. He thought that he was going to be the backup for that fight, obviously. When you get the champ to step in to be the backup, you get bumped out. And Benil understood that. But this is a guy who I absolutely love and respect as a fighter because Benil does not care. He wants to stay active. He will call over his manager to set up. 156, the official weight for fights. Benil Daryush. And I love that when he was on the, the podcast with Brendan Fitzgerald, he talked about how he's a mean guy that's got to pretend to be nice to people a lot of the time. <laughs> he's always got that dog He does a good him, right? job pretending. He does. He does. Pretend he's well. a sweetheart. But, yeah. man, you, you can tell come when come he fights, that's who Benio really yeah. is. He's a savage. Champion and now number one ranked contender, you can Piotr Jan. Piotr Jan. Oh, unclinch. Unc Only halfway, though. <laughs> ah, just <laughs> going the, the, relief is, the relief is here soon. I feel so bad for Paul's chair. 
<laughs> yeah, I do too, RJ. Especially after I have some of this candy that's sitting right in front of me. We don't want that. Piotr Jan, now I'm curious to see how he's going to handle this three rounds, right? One, We've seen him 36. do so well in five rounds because he takes stock and he Jan. just dismantles his opponents as he goes. I think he's no just going to have to get a start. He's, he's just going to have to get a faster, faster start. Yeah. Because yeah. if you if you let O'Malley right, next just get into a rhythm the out there, under, you're in a lot of trouble. You cannot let him build reach. Yeah. UFC welterweight Man, all, all my guys are right up. Now we got my boy from, Philadelphia, from Philadelphia, Sean Brady. Sean Brady. I happen to love Philadelphia, love the Eagles, and I love cheesesteaks, <laughs> Paul. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now, listen, when I talk about Sean, he is one of the most disciplined athletes that I have ever worked with and met in my entire life. This kid leaves no stone unturned from strength and conditioning, sleep, diet, recovery. He's an absolute machine yeah. and an animal. And I do, I don't know what's going to happen on Saturday, pounds, but at some point, weight for Sean Brady Sean will be fighting for Brady. the welterweight belt. Sean Brady's taking his strength and conditioning very serious. To your point, training with guys from the Eagles, Jalen Hurts, mm -hmm. and one of the best offensive linemen, uh, Lane, right, next Lane Johnson fighter to weigh uh, in the power in the I'm, I'm, I'm very well I'm yeah, very, very well aware. Know that. I know but I mean, he is taking that, right? this to the yeah. next level, up going up with super high level athletes. And we talk about Alexander super high level athletes, Volkanovski. number one pound pound fighter in the world. Yes. Says, hey, I'll be the backup. You said, okay, everybody else take a back seat. If Volkanovski has a chance to come on and try to become double champion, if, if. Something goes awry. And right after hand, having hand surgery, too. I mean, that's yeah, he a gangster. Dude, he's a, he is a gangster. That, he's a, I love this dude. He it, just wants one to fight. 155, the official weight for Alexander Volkanovsky. Yeah. Volkanovsky's one of those guys. He's like, look, I just bust my ass. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, reason sure. I am where I am. And he's no, like, he the guy. Pound, right? well, he the guy you can cool on. Yeah. And he doesn't have this, like, or he didn't have the style that made you go, I've got to watch him, i got to have him, until now he does. He's developed that over time as he's been earning all that championship experience. Sean O'Malley stepping to the scale here. Looking a little bit drawn out, but I mean, this these cuts are always tough on Sean, but I mean, to, to see the changes in 135 his body. 135 and a half, yeah. the yeah. official weight for Sean yeah, O'Malley. Yeah, since on Contender Series, oh, he, was so, yeah. he was so little then, and he, I mean, he, he was I mean, really, from when, we, when yes. he got signed to what he looks like now, yes. he definitely changed. Because he was changed. a child when he got signed. He, was he knows, <laughs> I mean, he knows how big of an opportunity this is, and. I was amazed to see how he handled the press, the presser, all of it. I mean, he, the guy is ready to be in the top five, I think, and, and yeah. handle himself there. And we even talked to him, like, in the fighter meetings. We talked about, well, what happens? You haven't had a main event. You're going to go potentially win this fight. You go right into a title fight being your first five-rounder. Yeah. He's like, if there's a dude that can do that and pull it off, it's me. It's me, yeah. Well, his confidence is his greatest asset. It's insane. Right, Omar Gudziev is about to take to the scale. Earn the first knee bar finish on Dana White's Contender Series. And then DC, you'll remember he had that very unfortunate incident at uh, the fight with Chow Bahalio. 171 got, pounds, the official weight for Gadry. He got by a knee, oh, it was an illegal yeah. knee. And then there was that oh, whole yeah, thing yeah, about yeah. should it have been like a point deduction? Should they have oh. called the fight? And he, he lost by technical decision in the end. But he's still a little salty about that one. Fighting, um, fighting a fellow Dagestani as well, this. And that's not gone down well in Russia. They don't like doing that. Well, sometimes you but it's just... business is business. But there's so many guys now in the UFC. Yeah, now it's fight. Yeah. All right, here you see my boy Abu Bakr Nurmagomedov. Manop is what we call him in the gym. This guy's got tremendous wrestling. But what is allowing him to now move his way in the right direction is that his stand-up is developing. Mm -hmm. And part of that is because he's more confident and he's more calm in the stand-up. Before, when he was forced to stand, he would almost panic wrestle. Not anymore. He takes his time. He takes what is given to him, and he is finding success and winning fights because of it. And as he keeps developing, he'll get better and better. 170.5, nice the official weight for Abubakar Nurmagomedov. Yeah, that's the, that's the Dagestani gangster right there. <laughs> Manab, Abu Bakr Nurmagomedov. That's the man right there. He hadn't been able to come to AKA for a while because he hadn't had his visa, but he has it now. Those guys will be back in America September 24th. We'll see you tomorrow. You're getting better with those names, DC. Champion. You're getting good with those names. Was you used one? to really struggle with those names. I, I used to struggle, but I'm getting better. My voice <laughs> well, is really I mean, cool. you're, you're, Your gym is like little Dagestan out there. Yeah. So. Can, I, can I just say, he's one intimidating dude. I, was, I had yeah, him through uh, <laughs> to do some stuff earlier this week, and he's just not. Not smiling. I no. tried my best, all my best, all my best right, Dagestani jokes and everything. <laughs> Not one smile. They didn't hit. They didn't I didn't know there were. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's my problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's, here's our guy from the UK also. 
of course, born in Dagestan, Mohamed Mukayev, 7 and 0, 2 and 0 in the UFC, third fight in seven months. Oh. Yeah, Most decorated busy, amateur mixed martial artist of all time, still just 22, wants to become the youngest ever. 126, the official weight for Mohamed Mukayev. Ever UFC champion, so he's got time. But so I have to say, he had a decision win last time out. If he wants to get that title shot in a red-hot division like 125, no missteps. Mm. I think he needs finishes from here on out. He's picking, he's picking his targets carefully, but it's a, it's a big ask to, to grab that belt right, at 23 exactly in that division. Stage, he's a confident kid, too. Oh, oh my God. Very confident. What's up, guys? I'm Caio Borralho. Uh, I'm fighting out of San Luis Maranhão from Brazil and I'm on 11 winning streak since 2015 I'm beaten and I'm representing the fighting nerds. You can see myself as a nerd, as a cool guy, or the nicest guy in the room. You choose. <laughs> <laughs> He's got all the personality. He love it. He's props. the man. He, he came is prepared the man. with props. I love that. Listen, he is one of the biggest standouts coming off of season five of Dana White's Contender Series. 186 the pounds. The official weight for Kyle Bohalio. Going for the coolest guy in the room. Sunglasses. Yes, yes, there, I yeah. see that. He did for fighter yes. meetings as well. He came in as cool guy. <laughs> came in as cool guy for our meetings. It's been interesting to see him start to hang out with with Hamzat yeah. and Darren and kind yeah. of start to he be part about of that, that pack that as well. And you know. He's, his stock is really rising very, very quickly inside the UFC. He, he said he tries to like attach himself to the people the with the championship ten, mindset. Comes out this yeah. week, Charles Oliveira, really taking note of what those guys at the highest level are doing. They're important for a kid like that. And here we have Nikita Krylov, and he is coming off mm. one of the biggest wins yes, of his is. entire <laughs> career, taking out Alexander Gustafsson in just over one minute, last time out in London, and I tell you what, man, I went back and I rewatched that. 206. His the official determination to get Nikita Alex Krilov. out there is unreal. And that's what you get from him all the time. I mean, the man has had 178,000 fights. Has had 170,000. I was going to say he that 178,000 like fights. But the number of finishes that he has had is just unreal. He is a wild man out there. It is kill or be killed all the time. Great stand up, yeah. good kicks, good power in his hands. He's wild. He's a, he's a fun guy at 205. Yeah. Nice dude as well. Always in shape. Malcolm Gordon, listen, this guy came into the UFC, debuted on Fight Island, things did not go his way, lost a couple, but now finds himself on a couple fight win streak, looking good out there again. And I think finding himself, finding the team that he wanted to work with, and really adjusting his style to go out there and, and perform like he knows he could. 126. Um, and that's what the I love to see is these Malcolm guys have Gordon. a misstep. The, the, the level of competition when you get into the UFC, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming and it takes you a little bit to find your footing. He seems to have found his ground and uh, I'm excited to see this matchup. Yeah, that'll be a good one for sure. <clears throat> All right. Well, the main event's weighed in. Haven't seen the co-main event weigh in yet, but you know, it's steady pool. And they came it's down, not... which means they had to go back. It's not... Yeah, that's, uh, that's concerning, but not too concerning because they came down, yeah. so they must be close. What's concerning was last time when we had 30 minutes, we're like, oh, remember, remember in Phoenix, yes. we were like, okay, Charles, it's 13 minutes to weigh in, you need to get here now. These guys are in the building, the they're good to go. Muhammad. Yeah. And here's my other guy that I'm friends with from still, Are you the, still friends with him the after Bolton the city of Chicago? <laughs> All Paul's friends almost fall when they come on the field. Yeah, what's going on here, Bilal? Uh, Bilal, listen, I hate that these guys have to fight each other, but I trained for a long time at Rufus Sport with Bilal and another one, another guy who just really tries to do every possible thing he can to make sure pounds, that you the see official there, weight for, for the belt. Bilal He's Muhammad. on an absolute surge here at welterweight, and he, he trained – for weeks now with Habib yeah. and all the Dagestani guys, and he talked about that training really being what needed to set him apart and be that next level. And he wants to do more of that. And wants to stay, and he was talking about flying out to Dagestan and wants to train with those guys out there and live with those guys. He's crazy for, for that. Yeah, you think, you, for yeah, punishment. you think it, it's, it was hard in the Emirates? Imagine how hard it's going to be in Dagestan yeah. because there's going to be a whole bunch of dudes that you don't even know. Look, it's one thing to get thrown around by Habib. It's another thing to get thrown around by some dude that's like 15 years old. <laughs> have no idea who he is. He's got his singlet over his sweatsuit, and he's just beating up on you. you know? And that's what happens when you go to places like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let, let's, uh, well, we're going back to the, to the weigh-ins. When we come back, I think we'd like to talk about that co-main a little bit more.
But you Mahmoud know, is here. You know, we talk about Mahmoud Radoff. He's from that region. And with all the guys that are coming from that region, you think, are you crazy? You think, take him down, take him down. This guy's more of a kickboxer. Yeah. Very steady in his approach. Takes his time. Doesn't overextend on anything. And he's a guy that likes to find his spot. 185 and a half. The official weight for Mahmoud Muradov. <laughs> One eighty-five and a half. Big star as well. Big yeah. star. Big, big star. But also very good at fighting at range. Mm -hmm. He does a good job of keeping you at his range mm -hmm. and fight it to his advantage. I was very impressed by this kid when I was watching him because obviously, you know, Laura, I like to watch these new fighters with clear eyes, you know, fresh eyes. <laughs> Drum roll. The champ is here. Al Jermaine Sterling. So we were pausing earlier because the guys had come down to check their weights. Looks like that check was a good one for Al Joe. Let's you, see. you see that stat, though? 12 wins. Second most in UFC bantamweight history. If he defends his belt, he'll be one of only a few guys to have yeah. defended it twice. Good. Right, Paul? Yep. 135. So, the official weight for the go. champ. Al Jermaine Sterling. It. Hey. Nailed it. So now, guys, is it almost time to start talking about Al Jermaine in terms of historical terms with another championship victory over another former champion in TJ Dillashaw as he did against Piotr Jan. I think a lot of people would see that as a hot take but it shouldn't be. No, it because look be. at his uh look at his resume. He's been building. Does he does he need that Dillashaw win to do it? Like? He he yeah. needs that win. Okay. He, right, because he needs to vanquish that, right? That's another guy UFC that was a champion that didn't US lose the belt. Mm -hmm. He needs to put that behind Volkan him. Uzdemir. You know, that's my boy Volkan Uzdemir. You know, I shared the octagon with this guy before. And for me, Uzdemir always seems to be right on the verge. And after his last fight, he won the fight, and he wants to kind of reset and move forward. He beat Paul Craig, another guy who was on a run. If Uzdemir can win this one, and avenge Gustafson, who he is training with now. 206 pounds, the official weight. 206 For no time, Volkan Uzdemir. He can really put himself on the short list of guys that could potentially fight for a championship. I believe now, as he has age, as he's been longer in the game, he's more prepared for a title opportunity. It was a little too yeah. early when we fought, yeah. and I knew it. I knew that it was too early for him. And here's the thing, right? Since he fought you, I did a little thing. Here's my shameless plug, my Eurowatch segment on UFC Fight Pass. So I went back through his career, came in on a couple of, couple of yeah, weeks' notice. Like three to, fights. Yeah, yeah. OSP. Then he got you within nine months or, yeah, like or a six, year, yep. something like that. It was that. way too fast. And he hasn't fought anyone outside of the top ten since. Yeah. Like, he's been in there. He's been fast-tracked to the mm -hmm. top of the division. Yeah. And that's why, as he ages, he starts to get better and more uh, okay more in those situations. More yeah. settled and do, in those fights. DC, how much do you like the fact that he's gone to All-Stars? He's tried. He's been with some great gyms, like with Henry Hoof, those guys. He did some st uh, stuff at TriStar. Now he's in the hotbed for the light heavyweight division in Europe. Jimmy Manua, Ilya Latifi, yep. Gustafsson. Fought those guys as well. So yeah. on both sides, I... I I really like how they've all said, okay, we'll help you get to the next stage. Yeah, and, and he's the guy that still has more career ahead of him. Mm. Right. Because Gustafson is on the tail end, uh, Latifi's on the tail end, Manawa's gone. Now those guys can try to help him get to where they all were at some point in their career. Yeah. We have six fighters left to weigh in. That's it. Three, that, that's fast. Three in the, uh, in the main card. <laughs> so I think we're going to give you a little list here. Right, TJ Gillesaw. Gamrot. Gamrot, Caitlin Chukagian, who kicks off against Manon Firo. That's a really great fight to kick off the pay-per-view portion. AJ Dobson, Lena Landsberg, and Armen Petrosian. I'm surprised Dobson isn't here because at the fighter meeting, he said he was very light. Yeah, he well, told us he was very light. Sometimes feed us a whole he lot of BS. He told us he was going back to eat because he was so close. Remember yeah. that? And now you're not down here He's yet. one of so, the last six to win. It could also be since he is maybe slept in some of these guys when you're like that close. Like a And they're not hurting that bad. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I'm not going to wake up I wish early. I could have slept in. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I haven't gosh. slept all night. I've just been up all DC, day watching DC the has, DC beat. has literally, you haven't slept in how long? I mean, I, I woke up at 5.30 yesterday. I oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's going running through jet lag is over real. Here. It's so real right now. So I just want to remind everyone who is just joining us that uh, we have lost the fight. Uh, Zubaira Tahugov versus Lucas Almeida is off. We are not expecting them to weigh in, obviously. So there is a medical issue for Tahugov. We hope he's OK. A little bit of inconsistency in his career, frustratingly for him and for his fans. So yeah. we, we hope he gets that sorted out so we can see him back in action. Now, 
Let's talk about our best pure fight, mm -hmm. shall we? Mm -hmm. The best fight that we can, fantasy matchmaking almost. Oh. Okay. You, you, you oh, look no. like you're ready he to go. Oh, up like a puppet. <clears throat> wow. So He's near it. Right behind you. Oh, I, I didn't know, I'm like you. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, a lot of people believe that uh, Islam Makachev versus Charles Oliveira am, is I the am. best pure fight that can be made right now. I believe now. that's what inspired this segment. I is think you're like? right, Velda. <laughs> and the way that you're leaning forward suggests to me that you have something to add. He's so ready. <laughs> I've got one. Yeah? I've got one right here. And I, 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 came at, I came up with it myself, and this is more, we're talking to these matchups skill for skill, not just big pay-per-view buys, not big things like that, but just really intriguing fight matchups. And I have Engano and Jones is a fight that I yeah. feel I've got to see yeah. because you've got just an absolute monster and a powerhouse in Francis Engano. And then you've got one of the greats, John Jones, who's a technician, tall, lanky, long, moving up to a different division. I'd he like to see how that will play out. a little bit. Yeah, because it's just not the right fight. Okay. <laughs> it's like it's, oh, wow. more, it's like it's very it's like. What do you have? He's good, but it's not the right. It's not the right fight. This is an right. opinion. Well, I believe this segment, segment is opinion based. So <laughs> well, you can be right or you can be you're, wrong. You're, you're, you're right. wrong so in that it's. I'll tell you. Uh, it's I'll tell you the right fight. The, the number one pound one fighter in the world. It's already wrong. Alexander Volkanovsky Ooh. versus Henry Cejudo. Because listen. That's a good one. Henry Cejudo trying to become a three. retired guy? No, no, he's, he's back he's in the inside of the flyweight? Hey, to be a, in, at flyweight, trying to chase what? down a third championship. Oh. And listen, here's the deal. Our fighting, our, sorry, featherweight. I was yeah. To say, try to fight know, featherweight. Like, yeah. But here's the issue, right? Here's the issue. Every time Henry Cejudo has had to solve a puzzle, he has gotten it done. From wrestling, being last in the world, to the next year being the Olympic champion, to losing to Demetrius Johnson, to a couple years later coming back and beating Demetrius Johnson. All the time away, studying Volkanovski, and Volkanovski being who he is, could you imagine these two in the octagon? The type of skill that they would have on display between them? It'd be a great That's co the It'd be a great co-main event to Engano and Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Because they were talking about because they were talking about buy rate. Well, if we're played, talking buy rates, if we're talking buy rates, we're not yes. talking buy rates. Then, right. then we're talking about pure I, fight. I think that is a good choice, DC. I Thank agree you, with you. Okay. Well, I, I magnanimous have a, of you. I have a great choice. So when it was Kamaru, <laughs> yeah. When Kamal Usman was champion, right, and just people are talking about, oh, he's moving on on George St. Pierre's territory. He's so good, pound for pound great. And he had Hamza oh. Chabaya just kind of coming up the rankings very loudly. I'm making it sound like he, like, tiptoed up the rankings. He, like, bashed his way through the rankings, stopping everybody. He had that great fight with Gilbert Burns. That was the fight. That fight was so good that even though Leon Edwards beat Kamal Usman, now it's turned into oh, the winner lot. of Usman Edwards versus Kamal Chabaya. The winner of that one. That's a good fight. That's the best one. Yeah, but he's like, Are you but literally not, talking in the middle of his he's 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 That's why really I got louder as it went no, on. No, I'm no, trying well, to drown Paul, DC Paul out. Mike is Paul on goes, DC. Paul goes, he's talking a lot. And I'm like, well, it's one of those guys that doesn't get much airtime. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> he really talks a lot, whatever he does. You know you know, you talk a lot when DC, <laughs> DC says, says you talk yeah, too much. Very good. Let me put something in my mouth. Very good. I'm going to add my... Two pennies worth, as we say, on uh, <laughs> two pence? my side. Two, 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 pen, two, two pennies. pennies. Two pence worth. Yeah, yeah. we can go with that. Tuppence. Um, tuppence. Tuppence. Look at you. I know. I've been practicing. Uh, Nunez versus Shevchenko. Yeah. I still, I still really want to see that fight. And I think, look at you guys rubbing your faces. How dare you? Like. Look at Paul's face. Paul, Paul's not buying it. Why not? The problem is, you're just not like trying. Like you've got two. <laughs> <laughs> You've got two of the greatest fighters. To the, uh, yeah, like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm standing by it. I think that is a great fight. How I often is the third movie in a trilogy? Yeah, yeah, like, come two. on, man. Let's just go back and watch Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was bad, wasn't it? Okay, okay, okay. I'm already driving the, the train on this guy, but I'm just going to continue to choo-choo. Shavkat versus Hamzat. Oh, okay. Oh, that okay, 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 is okay. a fight. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Yes, that's okay. Up there. Wow, yeah. that's one that kind of slid under the radar. I know. Huh? Yeah, but what's on I, the line? I very rarely. What do you mean what's on the line? They're well, both well, undefeated. I mean, yeah, they I very rarely will admit it. Everyone. I mean, they are both absolutely terrifying. That is a that's fight a that, that gets me if you so had to frothy. Pick, and I, I don't I change my mind. That's my pick. Yeah, that's my pick too also. I actually don't, because I don't know. I don't know if they go, hey, Hamzat, you versus Shavkat right now. If Hamzat goes, sure. Because Shavkat's way kind of down the rankings. Yeah, no way. Yeah. And he's dangerous. And he's one of those guys. Like, what, Hamzat might go, hey, man, I got bigger and better yeah. fish to fry. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, 
if you had yeah. to pick any two fighters on the UFC roster that aren't champions, you say these two guys will fight each other for a belt one day, it would be those two. I know. And, I almost, and, it's so good, I yeah. would almost want to save it. I mean, that it's, it's and, so but, good but those that you almost don't want to ruin it fight until it is a belt. Yeah, that, only right? fight for yeah. belt. Yeah. That, that would be a waste. If I'm Jamayev, I'm not fighting him unless it's for belt. Yeah. And stylistically, right? Like Chimaev is just rushing through everybody. Rachmanov's is piecing him up here. Yeah. What's up, guys? AJ Dobson here, representing Westside Barbell and Matt Brown's Immortal Martial Arts. Uh, also got Mark Coleman, the hammer in my corner. Uh, looking forward to show some improved ground and pound in wrestling. DC, I finally got my knee fixed, so I'll, uh, I'll have some wrestling endurance this time. There you go. 185, the you official the weight kid. for A.J. Dobson. A.J. weighs 185, and he spoke about that a lot yesterday. Not being able to do so much in training camp because he was injured. He said that we will see a much different version of him in the octagon tomorrow night because he did everything from his wrestling to his grappling to his road work. He said he got a lot of false confidence from the contender series because he got through the contender series even though he was hurt. He goes, one more fight hurt, and I'll get the surgery when I have some money in my pocket, doesn't always work out that most way. Most of no. his fight he's had that, or most of his career, I should say, he's had that injury. And he was saying how the surgery is supposed to be pretty quick. It took more than twice as long as it was supposed to because his meniscus yeah, it was, a bad was bucket handle so tear. bad. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I really do think that that's been a factor for him. Yeah. And as you say, hopefully some we'll see. added wrestling endurance compared to his last Well, when you've got guys like Mark Coleman and Matt Brown no as your coaches, you're not really complaining mm -hmm. to those guys, are you? No. Not you're those guys not are giving so them hard. your list of injuries, are yeah, you? Yeah, Matt Brown, Matt, <laughs> you tell Matt Brown, yeah, my knees bothered. You know, <laughs> like, get out of my gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're old school hard dudes. Yeah. Well, right. hold up. I, I'm hearing right, something. Fighter to the TJ scale is the former two-time UFC go. bantamweight champion and now the number two ranked contender, TJ Dillashaw. Now this, this guy right here. This, this, and I spoke about Al Jermaine's legacy. What about TJ Dillashaw? He wins this. He becomes a three-time bantamweight champion. There's nothing like this. Nobody does that. People don't lose the belt twice and win it three 135 times. 135 pounds, the official weight for well TJ Dillashaw. And 135 for Dillashaw. Title fight. He looks good. Official. I mean, lean. He's but. always in phenomenal shape. Yeah. You know, this guy is, two, is... Two pieces of gold will be traveling somewhere tomorrow. Yeah. Exciting stuff. Paul, let's, let's focus on this co-main then. Here's a question for you. Shoot. TJ Dillashaw wins, becomes the greatest bantamweight to ever live. What do you reckon? I think it's tough for TJ. He, I think he's still got to hold that belt a little longer just because of what happened. I think there's a lot of questions surrounding him. We can't forget that he got caught cheating, right? Mm -hmm. That was That's... a flyweight, though. I, listen, I am not, I am uncomfortable no, 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 about no, no, the cheating no. thing, but that was a flyweight yeah. bout. I'm just, no, losing, losing to, losing to Cejudo was that flyweight. Yeah. But the steroid suspension does live. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and I yeah, believe yeah. that when that's when when you have something like that attached to your name, yes. it does bring everything into question. Right. And that's Dominic Cruz has yeah. said that time and time again. And Dominic, even just a couple of days ago, he was doing an interview and they said, Dillashaw's Shaw's like right on the verge. He goes, I never got caught. And that is ultimately something he can always just throw out. Yeah. And that almost separates him from Dillashaw Shaw because the reality is he never got caught. That's exactly what it is. You've got one A and one B between, you know, Dillashaw Shaw and Dominic. And the tiebreaker for me is is the issue. And I, I'm we've had this discussion on the show many, many times. I'm not one that says that you have to completely write someone's entire career off when they have an issue like that. But if it if it's that close, if it's razor close between two guys, you have to give it to the guy who didn't have an issue. But when you look at that, at what he did, I mean the come from behind victory, some of the biggest upsets mm. in the division's history, beating <laughs> Cody twice. Right and when he beat Cody, right? I mean, certainly, he's, it's him or Dom, and it's just so hard to say. And I think if he goes out there and he has a definitive win against somebody like Sterling and then continues to hold that belt and win fights and doesn't have any issues anymore with, with you know, USADA and all those things, then, yeah, I think you can, yeah. you can start talking about him being one of the greatest bantamweights of all time, well, if not one of the best. We ever. have seen this guy do some tremendous things. I mean, from... When he won that belt and beat Hennen Burrell, you got to yes. remember who Hennen Burrell was thought to be yes. in the world Scared. of the martial arts at that time. at that time. And in that second fight in Chicago, that finishing sequence that he put on Burrell, he might have threw 35 punches to finish the guy because Burrell wouldn't fall down. Yeah. Dillashaw is an absolute savage. But ultimately, there's always going to be that question. And he even told me yesterday in the fighter meeting, I go, TJ, 
is that is it hurtful because a lot of the criticism comes from your peers and he takes note of that yeah mm. it does bother him that it comes from the people that ultimately you want respect from and it's the guys that do it just like you it's not the media and the fans <laughs> yeah. it's the people that step inside the octagon and right now he doesn't have that so he's out to prove that he can do everything that he did before without having these issues mm -hmm. TJ, just lastly, TJ Dillashaw, most wins, most knockouts, and most bonuses in bantamweight history. Just going to leave that there. But the guy who is chasing that and will look to surpass it, the champion, Aljamain Sterling, my take this week, he's been fantastic, relaxed, carried himself like an absolute champion. Big task, though. Because that's what he is. You know, the guy's a champion, and he is only improving. I've always been impressed with Aljamain Sterling and his ability, his grappling, his submission ability. But what impressed me most was flipping the result of the Jan fight in one fight. Yes. Because Jan was beating him up in that first fight. Aljo won the belt on that disqualification, and nobody thought that he would win the rematch. Mm -hmm. He went out there, put three rounds in the bank, one, two, and three, and won that fight in the first three rounds. To flip a fight like that after losing so badly without a fight in between yeah. to regain your confidence is so hard as a fighter. He talked a lot about his nutrition and what he did that day and that he wasn't feeling himself, he didn't eat enough, and a lot of people were like, oh, it's BS. But then when you come back and you put on the performance that he did against Jan in the, in the, in the rematch, you start to believe that, well, maybe he wasn't making that up. Maybe that was true because yeah, he looks then so he comes out and it's like, oh, 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 this is how you perform when you are feeling well. I, I believe him in that. Like, he sat down and he told us, he's like, dude, I had, like, a couple of little pancakes from the PI, yeah. and that was it. He's like, so I'm at a couple hundred calories and fighting a five-round title fight. Like, that's not enough. You got to fuel the engine, but for him to go out there and to not, as you say, DC, not just make the improvements, but in the specific area of the fight yeah. where he was getting handled, I mean, he made it a grappling match in his favor. And I tell you what, when he took Jan's back, well, when he takes anybody's back, you are not getting out of that body triangle. When he has your back, he does become that human backpack. And it's not always that he can finish the fight there, but you are not getting, he wins rounds that way. Yeah, right? he, he finds that position and he does not give it up. Well, yeah. he, he beat Piotr Jan up in the, in the second round of that fight. Yes. I don't care what nobody says. That should have been 10 8. And when we did our judging seminar, we asked the judges. One guy actually judged the fight and he goes, if I had to rescore that round, I would have given him 10, mm. 10 8. Because he did dominate, and he had all those criteria mm -hmm. that lead to a 10-8 round. And, and we talk about damage, right? And damage, <laughs> when you have somebody's back like that, what are you doing? You're sa just crushing their yeah. gas tank. That's damage. That's how you can damage somebody with your grappling, with your wrestling. Yeah. It doesn't have to just be no. with vicious strikes. And you can do that. Do and, and, and domination, yeah. The, the, the one thing that was probably the best thing about Al Jermaine Sterling also was that he was a guy that had to prove something. Everybody called him not a champion to the point that he didn't even want us calling him champ. When I would call him champ, he was like, yo, call me Aljo, mm -hmm. right? Because then you start to question yourself because so many people are saying you're not the champion. He went and beat the guy in that fight. But then who's next? Another guy that never lost the belt. So he's constantly having to prove himself. So he's kind of going from a guy that people called, uh, Sudo's called him Alja Lame because, <laughs> you know, he is, is, so now he's a bit underrated, like, it seems as though he's not getting the credit that he deserves for what he did in that rematch with Piotr Jan. It took, I mean, it took Charles a long time to earn that respect as well. I think some some of these guys that haven't had the perfection of someone like Habib, mm -hmm. everybody yeah, just, you've you had some losses because and... you can picture them losing mm -hmm. and, and you kind of start to yeah. doubt, like, are they really that great? But in my mind, like, perfection and greatness are not the same thing. You no. can be great without having to be perfect. It, and for Aljamain, this is the fight, I feel like. He had to win the Jan fight, obviously, and the way that he did it was perfect, but he still got booed yeah. at the presser the other day. In my mind, if he can take out TJ Dillashaw in a definitive fashion, it's going to be the turning point. It's going to be the pivot point when the, when the fans... What are you, what? you know, you would think that, but you know what sucks? You know what kind of sucks for Aljo? Is that he beat the guy that he won by disqualification. If he gets through Dillashaw, he beats the champion that didn't lose the belt. Then Cejudo comes oh, back, yeah. and it's another guy yeah. that never lost the belt. So he still has more to prove. It's like there are all these, like, hurdles in this division for Aljamain Sterling to cross. He seems ready to do that, but it seems a bit unfair to him that he's having to prove himself time and mm -hmm. time again. Luckily, we have a champion now that is more than willing to do that against the best fighters in the world.
All right. Well, we're talking Al Jermaine Sterling. Let's have a little reminder of some of his accomplishments so far in the Octagon. We took down a lot of greats in here. GSP. Sarah is the new welterweight champion of the world. Anderson Silva. Oh, oh my, he got hit. Chris Weidman. Most of those guys, it's right from the get-go that I realized who's going to become a champion. Aljo's the same thing. They come in with the unique set of attributes. He's got outstanding wrestling, great top control, but constantly looking for submissions. That you could tell is going to transfer over beautiful to MMA. Very, very technical, and his striking is wildly unorthodox. And as long as their mind's in the right spot, nothing can hold those guys back. He's under! Of all Ray Longo products, Sterling's seizing of UFC gold was perhaps the least emphatic. Oh! That's illegal! He's down, and he threw it anyway, so it's an intentional foul. This fight is over. And that is it. Piotr Jan will be disqualified, and Aljamain Sterling will be the undisputed UFC Bantamweight champion. The disqualification of then-champion Piotr Jan warranted an immediate rematch. And an opportunity for Sterling to prove his place as the true bantamweight king. You're not a legitimate champion if you win via disqualification. Sterling should not be your champion right now. There are pictures floating around, like, everywhere. Of Aljamain with the belt on one shoulder holding up shots, like, come on, Aljo. It's just not a good look. The hate that I got leading up to the rematch with Piotr Jan. Definitely does not feel like a legit title win. I use a lot of it for motivation. I feel like I almost thrive in the chaos. The Oscar goes to Fake Master for best actor in a title fight. Some people would have probably broken after 13 months of being just destroyed on the internet. Piotr Jan was kicking my ass in that fight, and now I have a title around my waist. But that's not me, that's not my character. You know, I don't shy away from adversity. I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna channel the energy and throw it right back in everybody's faces. He absorbed a lot of the public wrath for Jan's foul. He wants to really fix what happened in that first fight. And that's what I brought into that fight with me in the rematch. Ain't no stopping us, we do the impossible. Oh, this is big. This is gigantic. He's got the back. I reminded everybody what I'm capable of doing. Man, some big shots. This is nasty. Surely trying to find a window under the chin. Aljamain Sterling is going off. Look at him! Look at him! Look at the that's what I'm talking about! He said it was going to be a different fight. It sure is. It's a different fight. Oh! Oh my goodness! And redemption was sweet. Aljamain! All right, let's pull up the full page graphic on Aljamain Sterling. 12 wins tied second most in UFC Bantamweight history. Tied that longest win streak in UFC Bantamweight history as well. So very much in form. I love that strike differential means he hits without getting hit. That's the fourth largest in Bantamweight. And then we know he gets a hold of you. It's gonna be a rough night. He burns that clock very well, but I'm sure he's been looking for that finish. Aljamain Sterling, good to see you again. How are you doing? Uh, it's fight day, not for weigh-in day. It's <laughs> kind of like fight. a fight. The first fight, doing good, right? Though. Good stuff, yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Doing good, though. Doing good. Um, made the weight. And uh, I'm excited to put on a show for the fans tomorrow night. Well, congratulations on making the weight, first and foremost. Now, it's been an interesting one this week because we have a collection of the very best bantamweights in the world, all staying in the fighter hotel together. And I've been close to a few interactions that you've had with some of the others. How has it been to be the king of that division and kind of be privy to all of these interactions? Um, <laughs> heavy is the head that wears the crown, I guess, you know? But it's been cool seeing all these guys and uh, to be at the top, I think it speaks about my resume and how hard I've been working and it lets everybody know that I'm going to be a hard guy to beat no matter what you want to say about me and my style. Um, try stopping it. And if you can't stop it, then shut the fuck up.
There you, you go. can actually say that on this show. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I'm the new uh, guy. No, no, you I, don't, I don't know if we, are we on are we on ESPN? I'm sorry. No, 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 no we're idea. not on ESPN. No, like you're, you're, you're good, actually buddy. fine. You're you good. can good. say fuck as much as you want. Oh wow. It's YouTube. <laughs> okay. DC's doubling down. Uh, last one from me before I hand it over to the guys. You you kind of asked for this fight, Sterling. Like why? Why TJ Dillashaw? Uh, TJ is one of the most winningest bandweights in the UFC, and I think for me as a guy I've looked up to and watched along my journey of my career when I was first coming into the sport, I was supposed to be on that season with those guys, and I tore my labrum and had the surgery done earlier that year, and I thought I was going to be ready in time for the show, but I wasn't. I ended up fighting later that year in November, won that fight first round like 60 or 70 seconds, and then I got signed to the UFC a couple months later. So... Um, I felt like our destiny, our paths, it was our destiny to eventually cross, and here we are a couple of hours away from that. It definitely feels like you guys have been destined to fight each other for a while now, but stylistically, I mean, obviously he's got the striking, he's got the wrestling accolades. When you kind of lay there at night and, and think about what the perfect performance from you would look like, what do you, what do you see? I go out there, manhandle him in the first round, pick him up like Hamza Chimaev, bring him to Dana White, and say, I'm going to smash your boy. Slam him down, put the hooks in, choke his ass out. Listen, this is, this is a division where we do have some all-time greats, and TJ is considered to be among those. But it's a division where not, you know, we haven't had a champion like a Demetrius Johnson or an Anderson Silva that's, that's held the title for so, so long. How long until you are brought up in those greatest of all time band and weight conversations? That's up to the fans to decide. I feel like I'm right on the cusp of that. I mean, my resume speaks for itself. Some of these guys who are tied with my record, look at the guys that they fought in terms of competition. Mm. It's a joke. So I feel like my wins should almost be worth double the points, you know? So um, resume speaks for itself, mm. man. But at the end of the day, if you're not a hardcore fanatic you're not going to go back and do that comparison to see who has who, who has beaten who you're just going to look at the numbers and go well this guy's had more wins but i'm like well that's not even quality compared to the guys i fought you know so um i've always been in the top i've been in the top 10 since my third ufc fight i mean i've been fighting nothing but ranked guys i think i might have fought one guy who wasn't ranked in that time frame one everybody else has been ranked this entire time so uh, I think that speaks volumes about the, the competition I've stepped up to face and never shying away from anybody. And that's why I'm excited to take on a guy like TJ is why I called him out. I could have called out Cheeto. I could have called out Aldo. All these guys in a win. I could have could called out Henry Sedudu. But um, <laughs> I decided to, you know, give the snake an opportunity and see what he's all about and catch a legend. You know, I mean, it might be early to call him that, but catch a legend or a pioneer of the sport before he hangs it up. Aljo, you know, fans always want to know what a champion's day looks like after this. What is Aljamain Sterling doing for the rest of the afternoon? It's hot outside. You can't go out much because it's so dang hot. But what are you doing with the rest of your time right now? I understand that now you got to let go of everything, right? You've been putting TJ on blast all week uh, for weeks leading up to the fight with the accusations. But what do you do now as the champ as you get ready for the title fight tomorrow morning? Just decompress a little bit. Let the fight kind of just, I don't want to say dissolve, but get away from me a bit. Take a walk, hang out, chill with the family, get some food, fuel up, make a few jokes with the, with the crew. Just have a good time. Enjoy the downtime, man. That's, that's really it because it goes by so fast. This is just a moment in time. In a couple of hours, I'll be locked in the octagon with this guy. And uh, I just want to make sure I'm enjoying my time, my journey while I'm out here. So that's what the afternoon's going to look like. And if people want to see behind the scenes, they could definitely check out the YouTube channel, uh, Funkmaster MMA, and uh, see all the behind the scenes stuff. I try to give the fans as much access as possible so they can see what it's really like in our life um, to see what we go through, man. You can check out the weight cut, check out the fight week, and uh, check out what we're doing today leading up to the fight as well. I love that. I love that. But, um... Please refrain from plugging your YouTube on my show. I'm the only one that gets to plug his YouTube up here, Tim. I love the way you did that, dog. I taught you right. I taught you good. Always plug that YouTube. And give me my cameraman back. Uh. Al Jermaine, uh, you know, coming over here, being the co-main event on, on, you know, what people are talking about possibly being the biggest card of this year and one of the greatest cards that's been put together. How does that feel, man, to be the champion defending your belt 
here at the Etihad Arena with a you know a, a sellout crowd like this, it's it's got to be pretty surreal to sit back. Do you do you take time to look back at, at how far you've come at this point in your career? A hundred percent, man. You got to step back to see how far you come, you know. And when you, I always say you never look behind you, but then when you do actually take that time to look back and reflect. You see the entire journey of everything you've been through just to get to this point. Um, and I think needles to say, TJ is gonna move the needle for this event. So it's a, an exciting time for sure to be on one of the biggest cards. You got the, the needle mover. And that's why we have this matchup. So the, the fans are for, the, for, a, for a big show, man. This is gonna be the, the card of the year. Thankfully we got TJ on it. And uh, a couple of the big names are gonna help move the needle as well. Pun intended. Dude about to get paid too. Dude about to Step get paid. Dude yeah. about to get paid. Yeah. If he, he if he got paid for all of the little little digs as well, he'd still be a very rich man this week. Yeah. Al Jermaine, it's been a, a joy speaking with you. Thank you so much. Well done on the weights. We look forward to seeing you in action tomorrow. Hey, needless to say, <laughs> needless to say, uh, uh, thanks for having me, guys. You guys are in for a show tomorrow night. Make sure you guys tune in. UFC 280, baby. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, Aljo, where can we get the behind the scenes at again? <laughs> Funk Master MMA, my YouTube baby. Come on, dog. <laughs> Have a good one, Aljo. Thank you very much. You know, you know what's uh, crazy? You know, thinking about that, right, that last point, Al Jermaine Sterling might be the biggest winner in this thing because Charles isn't the champ, so he doesn't get the pay-per-view points. Islam does. Apparently he does. Hey, Apparently he, oh, he does. Yeah. I don't know. Well, he was saying. He said, oh, okay, he, good. Then he should. Yeah. He should. Yeah. He that should, is an unofficial John Gooden. He wouldn't, he wouldn't officially uh, say, right? By he wouldn't way. officially but say. But he should. He yeah. should, which is great. But, man, how about Al Jermaine Sterling on a card like this that's going to sell? He's going to make some money. We got Matthias Gamrot right here. Look, man, this guy right here has so much potential. His last fight was an absolute barn burner. And just... People are taking note, and he recognizes that the fans are taking more notice of who he is, but the people in the division are taking notice of who Mataros Gamrot is. 156, you, the official weight for Mataros Gamrot. Did you know much about Gamrot. he got to the UFC? I didn't. I did okay. not know how good he was, but yeah. now, right, he fought in Fight Island. That fight he lost the yes. first time. It was very, very Against close. Guram, Kuchiladze. Against Guram Kuchiladze. Yeah. But then he has afterwards been tremendous. And even, again, last night, while cutting weight, Habib and I are just talking. He goes, bro, he goes, it's Islam. His belief is it's Islam and it's Gamrot. Mm. He thinks that Gamrot is that good. And Gamrot that, thinks that as well. Oh, Gamrot believes yeah. the same thing. Yeah. The same thing. And to do that press and shirtless, I mean, my goodness. The you know, the got to put it out there. The got to put it out there. Yeah. I, For real, he, the is, vibe out. he is one of the most exciting guys coming up in that division. And I know we're going to have that discussion at some point. But when you look at him and you look at his skill set and what he's oh. capable of doing, it's – He's one of those guys you know you're going to see at the top. You can very, tell when you yeah. see him, right? When you look at these guys, sometimes you go, hey, this dude right here has got something. Yeah. Sometimes you see him and you go, he's got something. And he's one of those guys that has something. And watching him in the last fight with Sarukian, mm -hmm. with the Sarukian, yeah. that was close. you saw that both of those guys were really good. But in that fifth round when he was able to go get those takedowns and win the fight, it showed you that not only does he have skill, he also has the ability to win close. Yeah. And winning close is what happens – when you're trying to become champion. That was such a good fight. Um, and Patrice, yes. That's one of, that's like that, for me, that Shuvkat. Yeah. Um, Hamzat type yes. fight, those guys, young prospects. Sorry, Paul. It's okay. Let's talk, let's talk real quick about Petrosian. This guy, obviously world-class kickboxing, really powerful, absolute dynamite kicks, but training in Dagestan, yeah. Working on that wrestling, maybe not even for offensive purposes, but when you've got those animals trying to take you down all the time and you've the got the kickboxing skills Armin that Petrosian, Petrosian has, that's a smart man right there to be working with those guys. It's smart, but at the same time, you've got to think that's a grueling thing. He's moved his whole family to Dagestan. It's a wow. big old switch up that. in lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to win. You know what? You've had those guys in the room. Like, how do they train? Because, like... Well, Bilal Muhammad, for example, was saying how they just, this, it's never enough. Yeah, no, it's crazy to watch those guys train. It's crazy the effort that they put into their fight as Lena Landberg walks up to the stage. Yeah, she is a super mum. Saw her this week. No, no, not only is she getting ready for this huge fight, she's there with her daughter Cleo, who also met Joanna Jungjacek this week as well, coached by her partner Akira the Karatani. official weight for Lena Landsberg. 135 for Lena. 
she loves an elbow. Got to watch for that clinch in the <laughs> elbow work. Number one ranked UFC flyweight contender, Caitlin Chukagian. I'm Caitlin Chukagian. Um, I'm ranked number one in this division. I've been in it since it, it started. And um, I train out of, I live in Long Island. Uh, I train out of New Jersey, Long Island, all across the East Coast, wherever there's good training, that's where I am. Uh, I'm excited Laura Senko's here because I want to see if after the fight I can uh, meet up with her and get some hair tutorials. <laughs> I think her hair is always on point and I love that. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. DC doesn't say stuff like that to me in the morning. Oh, dude, so nice I, what did I tell you before? The support of another okay. another beautiful woman, blonde <laughs> fighter. Looks like it, she might be a little bit closer. She's using the uh, she's the old weight the, shield. The weight shield, but man, Caitlin Chukagian <laughs> is. I mean, how long has she been number one in this division? And she is on a heck of a run right now. Mm -hmm. Really positioning for her, herself for another shot at Valentina potentially. I think she just fights anybody too. She could beat everybody. But the champion, but she has the, not beaten yes. the champion. Well, yes. nobody has, right? Is that, except for Amanda. It's like a Robert Whitaker, <laughs> she's, Robert she's, Whitaker Izzy type situation. Yes. 127.5. Oh. Ooh, the official weight that's for a and a half. What was that? 127.5. That's a pound and a half. And. We are. That's a decent amount. Yeah, that's, One, a, that's a an hour and, an hour ten, and minutes. ten minutes. And you know when you get down to the last pound and a half, you come to check. You're just hopeful. <sighs> yes, no, that's that's it. Yes, she's not, not going to cut. try. No. But you know when you get to that last pound, it's not going to happen half, anyway. And you come to the arena like, hey, I want to get on the scale now, knowing I'm heavy, and just stop. You're done. Yeah, I'm done. I'm not doing this no more. I'm good. So, Chukagian is going to miss that's, the weight. That and sucks. That is too forfeit bad. some of her money. Probably twenty percent. It is. Is twenty percent. Mm -hmm. And she is. She is a very Big flyweight. I mean, he used to fight at bantamweight for a very long time. Well, so well, I, saw, I saw too. back in the day yeah. when C, she would try to make that weight for CFFC, and it, it, yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, she's not she's been it. there since she's been at 125 since its inception for a while. Yeah. So anyway, we've been doing a lot of talking here, haven't we? We're doing a lot of <laughs> interviews. So let's let's hand over some of the responsibility to our friend John Anik. He is with Mohammed Makayev. All right, we are thrilled to be joined by arguably the hottest flyweight prospect in the UFC right now, 22 years old, Muhammad Mukayev. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, too. So you're on a pay-per-view card just a few months after a big win. How do you feel this week? How's everything going here in Abu Dhabi? Feeling amazing. Made the weight, as always. This is my fourth flyweight fight in one year. Yeah. This is my third UFC fight in six months. I'm, I'm staying active in my mind, in my shape, and ready Look how handsome this guy is, by the way. So how excited were you to be part of a card of this magnitude, UFC 280 here on Yaz Island? Feeling amazing, especially like growing, watching these fighters who is on the main card now as a, as a young kid, yeah. playing games with them, and now I'm on the same card pay-per-view in Abu Dhabi. So you just had a big win, obviously, July 23rd, and now three or so months later you get back on the horse. Was that a priority for you to try to stay active and, and keep the momentum going? Yes, of course, I have a dream to become youngest UFC champion, and that's the end date, 2024 March, end of the March. So I believe I have this chance. I believe I will fight for the title end of next year if I stay active like this. Incredible. All you've accomplished. Fifth youngest fighter on the UFC roster at present. When people ask you, what is your why? Who do you fight for? What do you fight for? What is your answer to that question? I used to fight for myself and show people that I'm, I came as a refugee, refugee to UK and I had nothing from five pounds living a day to 50 Gs from Uncle Dana. Right. And uh, I think it's something big and motivates other people. And now I have a kid last week. Now I fight for my family. How about that? Good for you. Well, congratulations yes, on that. So Before much. we let you go, quick thoughts on the matchup in front of you here Saturday night. Early finish, first round finish, and um, I'm ready to go again, maybe December or UK event next year. All right, you heard it there. New blood at flyweight to keep an eye on 22-year-old Mohamed Mokayev live no, tomorrow no. night at UFC 280. Johnny, back to you. Thank you very much, John. So the UK's Mohamed Mokayev, perfect professionally. He has Hustam, Rustam Havilov in his corner, who's 
like the, his hero. He remembers seeing him at the Otis uh, when he was 16 years of age. He saw the suplexes. He got a suplex in his last fights in London as well. I, I mean, I love this kid. Oh, okay. I love Mukayev. <laughs> RJ was like, who's Mukayev? Like, I right thought you were shutting he, me down like, for a minute. RJ like, was like, yo, hey, this kid, I, I don't really know. <laughs> what? I said, no, I love Mukayev. And yes. listen, if this dude gets an interview <laughs> right after weighing in, at only three and only two and only UFC, <laughs> he's the real deal. If Mokayev gets he knows interview. how to market. Oh yeah, let me tell you. You, tell, you can yeah. tell Great Paul. English. Paul's done this show before, I'm tell on but you. not as I'm many times. I'm gonna tell on you. I'm yeah. gonna tell on you because be, during that piece, DC goes, "Who is that?" No, you're a liar. <laughs> oh my god, outrageous. <laughs> I, 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 I saw it happen in real he's time, and I'm like, Paul, there, that... please give DC wrong information about him. Say he's, <laughs> should, a, say he's yeah, a different right. guy. Yeah. Say he's a middleweight. Big time middleweight. Yeah. Did I just fight his barrier? Did I fall for all of that? Did I fall for all of that? No, I love the kid. I think he's a tremendous. Be honest with me. I think he's the future. I think he's the future. Paul, name one more thing about him. Where's he born? Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Go ahead, Paul. Talk about Mukai. No, 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 no. It's all good. It's all good. I think they want us to talk about some other stuff right now. But we do love a little bit of Muhammad Mukayev. I do. And looking forward to seeing. I'm looking at these M&Ms, what I'm looking at. All right. Well, while he's looking at some M&M, M and M's. Oh boy. It's early. I'm already. I'm already going off script. Now we're going to do some real top five. Okay. Okay. So we have the official rankings. That's one thing. But I think we can all agree there are certain fighters who are maybe younger in their career or that the, there are some accomplishments where you think guys might actually have a higher ranking than where they should sit. We got two big divisions up this weekend with the lightweights and the bantamweights. So we're going to look at those and we're going to ask you guys to share your real top fives. Not the official ones, might be the same, but for the bantamweights, let's go with your real top five. First up, let's pull up the official bantamweight top five. So we have our benchmark. Of course, the champion, Sterling, then Piotr Jan, Dillashaw, Marab, who is here, not competing, Cruz Sanhagen, Marlon Vera, a solid top five there, Laura. It what is. What have you got? It is, and I don't, mine's not gonna be too much of a hot take because I actually think that those are fairly close, but I have a couple little adjustments that I would make. Adjust if I were to make, for us. I will make some adjustments. Um, and sorry, I. I wrote these down as Aljo being number one, but obviously he's the champion. Um, no, I had it like this as well. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Aljo, TJ, I almost wanted to put TJ one, but I can't disrespect the champ like that. Aljo, TJ, Marab, Jan, Chito. But you could have done that because that's kind of the point too. Like if you I think know. he's technically yeah. the but better I guy. But I, I flip-flopped on, like flip on that one so, so well, much. What? We're gonna find out tomorrow. I know. Yeah. yeah. All right. You ready for mine? I'm ready. All right. Here are my top five. Cejudo, double champ as he left. The retired fighter. Coming back in the Usada pool. Aljamain Sterling, number two. Piotr Jan, number three. Dillashaw, and Umar Nurmagomedov. Yeah, wow. that's a good one. Yeah. He's a very. He's a problem for every single guy, and he will at some point, very soon, be fighting in the top five of the division. You don't have Marab up there. No, I think Umar and Marab are very similar. Yeah. I think that uh, better Marab, striking from Umar. N a little bit more uh, different. Yeah. Type of striking than Marab. And not yeah. because he's your teammate. No, not that. Because <laughs> I'm, okay. I ser I'm, I'm being honest with you because he actually has fantastic striker. Yeah, striking. His kicks are incredible. Yeah. yeah. I'm way up there. Okay, mine. I have Sterling, <laughs> Piotr Jan, Sandhagen. Dillashaw, and I got Marlon Vera in there. I, yeah. I, I love me some Marlon Vera. I think he's me too. Uh, just the, so the I guess I guess you feel like Sanhagen later. beat Dillashaw then, huh? Mm -hmm. I guess you feel like Sanhagen actually beat Dillashaw in that last fight. I do. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. definitely an argument you yeah. can make. Yeah, yep. and that's you know what I mean. That that's why I have it that way. Yeah. I mean, and again, these could all be flip flops so many different ways. I didn't even think about um, yeah. Nurmagomedov to be in there, and I, I kind of left out. Um, Marab, too, I, he's yeah. another guy yeah. you could throw in there yeah. too. So shout out to Marab. You're you're on my list in here, buddy. You're on my list in here. <laughs> what don't, about in here? Don't come double legging me. All, what about uh, your list in way. here? Yes. This one. Here or in this this one? This. This is a secret list. Okay. okay. Fair, fair There's enough. Only a few people. My list is like the secret recipe of fighters Paul forgot. I mean, you go. <laughs> so I go Petrion number five. If he was a few inches taller. Sorry, who was that? Petri. Yeah. Petri. Petrion. Petrion. Okay. Petrion. His cousin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This Long lost twin. <laughs> Number five. If he was a few inches taller, he might be. Oh, undefeated. look at it. 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 You were afraid to uh, oh, disrespect you, the champ. Aljamain Sterling? I got 
four. I keep saying I'm wow. not going to underestimate him, but I keep doing that. TJ Dillashaw, number three. Umar Nurmagomedov, 15-0. and 0. I, 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 I got to stop not believing in the Khabib guys. Yeah, Islam and yeah. him. It's like there, there's a recipe there for success. He's 15, and he's also the youngest. He's only 26. Marab Navalishvili, number one. The most durable fighter in the UFC, regardless of weight class. Yeah, he's You tough. cannot kill this man. The you, Marlon Marais beating that he took, came yeah. back and won. Yeah. Best cardio in mixed martial arts. How about this? Ruffian Stutz, 18 and 1 fighter, right? Who's the yeah, one loss that he had? Fist, man. Marab yeah. Devalish. That, that one broke my heart back in the yeah. day. When he, when and he also, Marab can dive into solid ice, split his head open, mm -hmm. 70 stitches, walk away, and fight within a few months. That was the tiebreaker between him and Umar. <laughs> I thought it might <laughs> be. Do you have, do you have the block of ice on there ice. in your top of your list? Because that one, I got a block of ice as well on that. The block of ice is actually a middleweight. So yeah. that's another one. Yeah, <laughs> good point. I'm going to add my uh, two pence, pennies worth. Tuppers. What is it? Tuppers. Two cents. <laughs> two cents. Yeah, here we go. All right. Oh, this is exciting. He gets to play. Like, look I at do. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he actually gets to play oh, at this point. I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you guys from, like, <laughs> all the way across the water. The whole water. time he's just, like, guiding the, the traffic. Now he gets to play. He's like, oh. Yeah, and now I get it all wrong. Come on, then. Okay, so Sterling is my number one. <laughs> uh, Piotr Jan, Marab, uh, TJ. The Magomedov. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, on board yeah. that. Yeah, the Magomedov train, for sure. Oh, why are you like, come on, man. Come it's on, like, John. It's like, yo, why are we picking him on our team, man? This dude don't want to shoot. He don't shoot the basketball. He don't hit the baseball. He don't play cricket. You got to go get a chance. I don't are you do. good? No, but I like it. <laughs> I like it. The shorts are light, nice and long. They cover up my, they cover up my knobbly knees. <laughs> You know, nice. I won't wear the vest though, not with the these. The vest? I, my, I've got Jersey? intimidating Tag biceps. Jersey, so. man. He wears a vest. It's a vest. You gotta get him a singlet. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Richie, you shut up in there. <clears throat> All right, go ahead. So, finish. yeah. No, no, I, I think I finished it. But Umar Magomedov, to your point, Sorry, I think Richie. wrestling very, very <laughs> strong. I think he's got some of the most dynamic striking yes. in the division. We haven't seen it. But I haven't love to, Corey right? Sanhagen. Like, I feel bad not putting him in there. But yeah. I think. The no. Magomedov can throw a, a few. I um, think this this all just shows how good this damn division, division is right yeah. now, yeah. right? That we all have so this good. slightly different right now, and we're all like, ooh. Yeah. Isn't I had crazy? Corey Sandhagen. Yeah, Zach. you had Sandhagen. Yeah. Paul had Sandhagen. But, yeah. like, to say that so many bad. different guys are on. So, the ones that were on all of them were Aljamain Sterling. Seems like Piotr Jan was on every one. Dillashaw and... Yeah. And the Mega Metal was on three of the five lists. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, and he's not even truly a yeah, top five guy. That the shows, top five yet. Shows, shows you how deep his division yeah. really is. Yeah. What about Sean O'Malley? For how good has he been? Nobody listed him as one oh, of the top five. I'll tell you what. Well, and he's right on the verge. Depending on how Saturday goes, we might all have for sure. that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, for sure. Yeah. Great stuff. Like all right. Sound effect? I did. It's very <laughs> nice. Very nice. We're going to switch gears now to the main event. That sounds like switching to gears. To the main event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys have the stick shift in America still? Not yeah. anymore. Some no? people do. Okay. We try not to. All right. Hold the that ones thought. that really like cars have that. Yeah. Let's, uh, That's not me. Well, I know who likes cars, who is driving a Ferrari this week. Our guy, Charles Oliveira. Take a closer look. Eles tiraram o cinturão por causa de 200 gramas. Não ligo pra p*** que esses caras acham, deixa de achar. Eu vou continuar fazendo história. Hopefully, he can put all the fight week noise, the scale and everything else behind him and fight to his potential tonight against Justin Gaethje. The lightweight champion of the world has a name. His name is Charles Oliveira. That's been the message from the Oliveira camp even since the scale. Only Justin Gaethje can leave here as the undisputed UFC lightweight champion. This title will be vacant as soon as the clock starts to tick. Oh, oh! Charles landed a big right early. Oh, he hurt him again. Oh, oh an uppercut now for Gaethje. Knocks Oliveira down. Got him, throws down a gun. Oh, my goodness. This is a war. Oh, beautiful combination for Gaethje. Oh, oh my goodness. Gaethje is loading up with that left hook. He cannot load up. When he loads up, Oliveira sees that. Nice little uppercut from Oliveira. Absolutely nuts. Through half a round. Oh, oh big left from Gaethje. And a return on the counter right by Oliveira. Throw down. Throw down. Flying knee, guillotine attempt, right hand, front kick to the body, and here's that pressure. He starts marching towards you. Gaethje back to work on the leg kick, landed a right hand. Oh! oh. Big knockdown with a right for Oliveira. Oh. Oh. Now trying to get transition back. to the back. Oh my goodness, Gaethje's, Gaethje's out. out. He can't let him take his back. Oh, he's got the choke. Oliveira's under the chin, switches up the grip. Oh! 
my that goodness. That's going to do it. This dude right Who here, can man. stop Charles Oliveira? 11 in a row and still Tremendous. the best lightweight on wow. planet Earth. Eu mostrei quem realmente sou verdadeiro campeão. Eu tô indo pra mais uma defesa de título, eu tô indo reconquistar um título, não. Eu tô indo pra uma defesa de título, isso ninguém vai, não vai tirar da minha cabeça. Não tem como tirar da cabeça. O Charles ainda continua sendo campeão do peso leve. Ei, tá faltando alguma coisa aqui, não tá? O campeão se chama Charles Oliveira, o Charles do Bronx. The champion has a name, his name is Charles Oliveira. Look at that. Most finishes, 19. Most bonuses, 18. Laura, most submissions, 16. Top of the list, three times over. That's impressive. It's unbelievably impressive. And I mean, we were just talking off camera. What's even more <coughs> impressive about it is where he came from. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the Charles that we used to watch fight, who was only a submission artist, who was only dangerous off of his back. And now Charles Oliveira is dangerous everywhere a fight goes. He's not just well-rounded. There's a lot of guys who are good everywhere, but there are very few guys who are dangerous everywhere. Striking at distance, striking in the clinch. He's got the type of wrestling that augments his jujitsu, and then obviously the jujitsu itself, the submission game. You can't find a, an easy path to victory now when you're facing Charles Oliveira. And then you add the unstoppable mentality on top of it. Tell me where he has a hole. I don't know. That's what impresses me is, is the durability and the heart that people have questioned even up until that Justin Gaethje fight. He's calling him a quitter. And back in the day, he had some losses. He was still going back and forth. He didn't, he wasn't really having, he was having trouble making weight at featherweight. They made him move up to lightweight. He was still on the fence about that. But once he decided that he was going to be a lightweight and he was going to fill out that frame and just march forward, he's been Can unstoppable. I say that you changed him. On a, in a, no, I mean that. He, don't even, the, he I really mean don't, that. Paul don't want to say it because like, I get give so it a, much hate yeah. for having won that fight. Well, because no, you won the fight I mean back that in as 2017. Like I know. You, you are the pivot that was, point but, in his career. I don't want to say that, right? But it, it was that one of those losses along that way is when he finally decided, listen, I, I, I've got to start sharpening up. Yes. I'm not just going to be able to go out there and look for submissions. And I remember even back when he fought cowboy back in the day i remember thinking this dude is scary because i was in that training camp training with donald for that fight and we were like we took him back then we were taking him dead ass serious so you can imagine now that muay thai i, I think that's one of the things that really gets slept on people are yeah. so worried about going to the ground his yeah. guard his freaking striking yeah. is really so solid good. he's got you saw on the highlight there the front kicks the knees he's got elbows and now He's got these like cinder blocks of fists and he's long and lanky on top of that. <laughs> he's a scary mother effer, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's scary. The dude's scary. You know, I, I watch him uh, in, in like all of his last fights, right? We're calling him next to the octagon and it is amazing to watch his approach mm -hmm. and the way that he attacks these world-class fighters as if they are no threat to him. And even when they hurt him, he has this ability to recognize that they will not try to finish him because he has essentially the boxing 10 count. Right? When you get dropped in boxing, you get 10 seconds. One, two. Then you kind of shake off the cobwebs and you get back up. Charles has that 10 count. Because if you jump on him and try to finish, you end up on the ground where he wants you. Yeah. No one and he, follows him. Nobody follows him. So when he gets dropped, he goes, okay, I'm going to lay here. Take a second. Yeah. I'm going to regain my, my mind. And then I'll get up and I'll start to press again. Mm -hmm. But he's also very smart. Because when Dustin Poirier was just clobbering him with left hands, he was just kneeing him in the body. Yeah, Every time they came together, too, like man. bad, right? Every time they came together, Dustin swinging for the head, he's kneeing them in the body. Boom. Yeah. Uh, Michael Chandler. When Michael Chandler was swinging for the head, he's kneeing them in the body. Then he and hits him with the left hook. Front kick. Front kick, yeah. front kick, front kick. He just has a great approach to fighting now. And that's what makes him dangerous. Because he's also very big for the weight class. He's just a very scary guy. <laughs> Paul, did you and Oliveira ever have a conversation after your fight in a time that's passed? Yeah, I've seen him a couple times. And, and back, I forget what fight it was exactly, but he won one of these 11 fight win streaks that he was yeah. on, but it was a while ago and he was still not even in the rankings. It might have been Jim Miller when he beat him. I think he beat him twice, I think, too. And I interviewed him and he was like, uh, you know, 
thanks to, you know what I mean? Like that fight that we had, and that's when he decided, I'm going to be a lightweight. I'm going to yeah. fill out into this frame, mm -hmm. started doing more strength and conditioning. And I have nothing but respect for that guy. And yeah. listen, yeah. to those people that anybody wants to give me hate, I know he's a different it athlete But it doesn't now. matter, though, dude. You won the fight, and you should never have to apologize for no. success. Exactly. Oh, and and the, no reality, the reality is this, though. Charles Oliveira was very good, and he was winning all those fights. But I tell you one thing. I remember when we started doing DC and RC on ESPN. Ryan Clark, for his first fight, went to uh, Conor Another McGregor's plug, fight. really? No, no, I'm just like, listen. Charles Oliveira had just become the champion in Houston. And he was always, like, a nice guy. And he was always a confident guy. But he walked into the arena when Conor fought Dustin Poirier that third time. And I was like, wow, mm. he looks different. He's carrying himself with an even greater confidence because there's something to being a champion that really does elevate you. And Oliveira is living in that. I asked him straight up, I go, dude, what happened? How are you doing this? And he goes, the fighters that I fight don't understand this. I'm so free. He goes, I am so free. That until, that they, until they can comprehend how free I am inside the octagon, they have no chance. He said he does feel the threat, and he feels when he's hurt. But he also recognizes that these guys still don't know. that even though he's on his back, he can end the fight at any moment. It's crazy. And that's, yeah, yeah you know. <laughs> but that was, listen, I got a couple jobs, man. I'm sorry I didn't mean to. Shameless I didn't mean to. I'm just trying, I'm trying to get a point across. Because even Clark, right, leaving the NFL where guys have huge personalities. He goes, that guy's the champ. He's he goes, got an energy. He's got an energy yeah. about him. Yeah. And he's massive. Bro, out, out of competition, Charles Oliveira is huge. He looks like he weighs 185, 190 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. He's eating good nowadays. He's, that dude's rich, he's eating, man. He's, eating, hey, dude's he's rich. got 18 bonuses. <laughs> 18 Forget bonuses. Forget being a champ and, and having a lot of money. He's got 18 bonuses. If you money. think back to a couple times, he's got, got 100 grand on those big yeah. bonuses. Yeah. Hey, listen, he's spent it all bringing his crew out here. My God, oh my you're, you ain't kidding, dude. He's got like deep. 30 guys. Um, Laura, we're talking about the, the sparkling resume and skill set of Charles Oliveira. I had a conversation with Islam's team. And they flat said, this is a very, he has a very favorable style for their guy, Islam Mahashev. They just don't see it like we do. And it blew me away. But then sometimes we all get caught up in, we're, we're hyping things. We're not mm -hmm. necessarily looking for the negative and the holes. Can you see that perspective from Islam Mahashev at all? Moments. Because okay. when you think back to like the Kevin Lee fight, for instance, there are times, limited times in recent history, where Charles has been controlled a bit on the ground. And I'm, what I'm picturing in my head is Kevin Lee. And when you think about Islam being in the position that Kevin was in in that fight for almost an entire round, that fight gets finished, I think. And, and Charles would not have been on the winning end of it. Islam Mahachev is as dominant as you get on the ground, but he has something that Habib didn't have, which is the striking that is enough. When people face Islam, they have to think about the takedown and it's what makes his striking so successful. It's like when Chandler fought Hooker, right? All Hooker was thinking about was the takedown and so it set up the knockout. And so when people face Islam, they're constantly having to think about what is he going to level change? When is he going to level change? It allows him to set up his kicks. It allows him to set up his combinations. So he is a threat on the feet, not nearly as much as Charles. We have to be honest about that. But enough of a yep. threat on the feet where he's not just striking for the sake of getting to a takedown. He can strike, and he can do that for as long as he needs to and then find his spots. And he's so good at wrestling to the body. He's not just a guy who has to shoot double legs and single legs. He's gonna grab you. And if he can touch your ankle, your leg, whatever, grab a hip, he doesn't even have to get locked behind mm. the knees or under the butt. He will take you down. He will find a way to get a hold of you and take you down. Yeah, I think the fact that he can wrestle to the body lock so well and yes. use trips Kills the and press exactly. exactly. So where most guys are terrified to even level change. Look, 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 look. <laughs> look, at, look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> so Just that, ask him. <laughs> you guys are going to get me the killing, <laughs> You're killing there Felder are out here. Brazilians here in my <laughs> inbox telling me how terrible I am and how I haven't done anything I mean, with it my did life. Happen. Who's on YouTube? <laughs> anyway, 
But, yeah, I think the fact that he can use those trips, use that Sambo background, yeah. that's where I believe he can have so much success. Not to mention that he can just stall him out. The yeah, longer wow. this fight goes, mm. the way they're training, man, talking to Bilal and talking to Jared Gordon, the, the, the way that Khabib has got these guys training, he is 100% ready to go in there and fight all out for 25 minutes. You know, when you talk about Islam, he's one of those guys that possesses a lot of skill. But he's so good in specific areas that it makes him very difficult. When this guy grabs you, he he feels like he weighs 220 pounds. He really does. He is insanely strong, and his base is second to none. I can recall a few times in the gym where I would just take the smaller guys and just kind of throw them off of me. And I tried that with Mahasha, and I was like, okay, everybody, haha, I'm going to just throw them off of me. And then... A minute later, he was still on top of me, and I was like trying to throw him off of me. And then all of a sudden, I'm sweating and really grappling yeah, you're because I can't get this dude off of me. So I'm having to go deep half guard. I'm having to do things to try to get this guy off of me because he feels that strong. And when you talked about his striking, Laura, the difference between him and Habib is Habib was going to overwhelm you yeah. at any hit him. He didn't he was care. Rush. He was going to just he was Cain Velasquez. Yeah, right. He was going to walk you down. He was going to wear you down, and he was going to intimidate you to the point that you go, I can't get him off of me. Mahashev doesn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. He can play the game. He can strike with you also until he gets to his takedowns. And he does believe that his base can just kill the game mm -hmm. of Oliveira and keep him in front of him. Remember, guys, Islam for a long time was thought to be a decision fighter. He's finished the last four. And of those four, a couple of those guys have been Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world champions. So he has seen guys, yeah. nobody like Charles Oliveira, though, yeah. who has $900,000 in bonuses. Yeah. Yeah. This is what Oliveira has in the bank. And do, I don't know if, it's a, if you can give me a quick answer. I'd appreciate it. This guy, Ali, who's in the camp of Charles Oliveira, the wrestling guy, do you know this yeah. guy? Is he the, is he the tonic? Is well, he the guy who's going to help? So, he's a guy, so anytime you, you, you bring people in to try to help you prepare for someone to be a replica of what you're going to see. But... It's never the same until that guy grabs you. Yeah. Because people can try to pretend to be someone else. It doesn't matter. Like, I, I had guys that were 6'4 and did everything John Jones did, but the moment we were in there, he felt different. Steve Emiocci is the same. Every title fight, you bring someone in to be the guy, to mirror your opponent. As best you can, but As it's best never. You can, but they're never that guy. Okay. By the way, that coffee's making me so nervous, dude. It's been just like dangling. Yeah, and I'm like <laughs> swinging at it. Yeah. You have not hit it once. No, you I'm, have not. I'm really good at it. Some that. good control. Yeah. Oh, man. Still got it. Um, we're going to go back. <laughs> I don't have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're going to go back to the real top five. This time we're going to do it for the lightweight. So just a reminder, there's the official real, well, sorry, there's the official top five, which we're going to show on our screen right now. Of course, we have a, a vacancy there for the lightweight title. However, ch the champion has a name. Uh, Charles Oliveira, number one. Poirier, two. Gaethje, three. Mahachev, four. Chandler. Chandler, five. <laughs> uh, but we're going to go around a room and we're going to get the real top five. Paul Felder's real top five. What you got? I feel like I might I, I, I might have had to change one of these, but I'm going to say what I have. I'm going to be honest and, and come out what I have here. I mean, I have, obviously, I have Charles Oliveira right now. I have Islam. <laughs> at number two, and I feel like, again, this is probably something we can swap around. I have Saruki in here, Poirier, and Dariush. Now, obviously, I think Gamrot is also somebody that can be thrown on this list <clears> to <throat> be in there. You look you look per perplexed. Oh, I'm just studying it. I'm just studying. <laughs> I mean, Why'd you just go gonna Armin keep... and not? Yeah, I feel like, yeah. That, that well, because I think a lot of people, just, just, a lot of people argue that Armin won, and I do believe that if they fought a bunch of times, I feel like he, he can make adjustments and, and it yeah. can yeah. go back and forth. And I just think that that kid, with his striking and the wrestling, I do think we're going to see him up there. I think that Gamra, Sarukian, and Islam are the future of the lightweight yeah. division. But not on your list. Come, come, what's that? He's but, not. Cam, but Gamrat's not on your list. I, I just said that that's what <laughs> the change yeah. I would make. By the way, Sarukian fought Islam Makachev on two weeks' notice in his he UFC fought debut. Really well. And great fought job. well. Did a yeah. great job. So that was in Russia, right? Brazil, Brazil. Russia, Russia, Russia. Yeah, Russia. yeah. So it's very good. I get to go second. <laughs> <He's worse. laughs> Look at this. All right, all right. So uh, number one has to be Charles Oliveira. Islam Makachev, number two. With everything that he's done and will continue to do, Poirier have it number three. I've put 
Raphael Fazeev in there. Another great one, man. I think he's another guy just that's different. for sure going to be in that. Just streets ahead of everyone with his striking, really yeah. is. And because he's working out in Tiger Muay Thai and now down at uh, Kill, uh, down guys. with Henry Hoof, like, yeah, the wrestling's going to be there. And I can't ignore Justin Gaethje. Uh, I think yeah, he's his camp man too. and his adaptability and everything that he offers, yeah. I just love lightweights. RJ? Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, producer, DC. Uh, as always, I like to use my powers for good <laughs> and try to match make a little bit. So I'm going to start bottom to top. Uh, Fiziev, number five. Uh, number four, Justin Gaethje. And I put these two together because imagine those two fight. I can't. Mm. We talked earlier about like what's the best pure fight. And he the wants that fight The most exciting fight. The most exciting fight in mixed martial arts right now. Yeah, might be Fiziev and Gaethje. Gaethje. Be yeah, but Gaethje's not responding to him because he doesn't have to. Yeah. He's not there yet. Yeah, because he's still kind of outside looking mm -hmm. in. So this is me pressuring. Uh, Charles Oliver, uh, uh, Dustin Poirier, right there in the middle. The good thing is all these guys fought each other, so this made it easy. Charles Oliver, too. I went Islam number one. I mean, when you're that big of a favorite over the champion right now and you're about to fight, you make him number one. What are the, what's wow. the line? He's right like now. two to one right now. Is he? Pretty big. Minus 190 Islam. Mm -hmm. That's yep. crazy. Crazy, right? That's crazy. All right, you ready for mine? All right. Yeah. Are, we, are so, we ready? Yeah, let's go. At number five, I have Fazeev. I think Fazeev is a guy that's going to be in the mix for a long time. He's very tough, very good at everything. Mateos Gamrat, I believe that this guy is a future champion. Sarukian, like you said, flip flop yeah. those guys in there. Dustin Poirier is going to be around as he has been for a long time. He's only lost to champions. Dustin Poirier has. He doesn't lose to anybody else. Charles Oliveira, number two. Islam Mahashev. Number one, I think that Islam is, and I'm not picking the fight, you know, because I can't do that. Again, I'm, I'm kind of doing what RJ did based on the, the, the uh, line and only the line. I'm, I'm doing that. Nothing to do with him being your teammate. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I can't pick fights. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Well played. Absolutely no bite. Okay. Um, I have at number five, Mateus Gamrot. I, my, my list is going to be a good mix of everybody else's. Number four, I have Justin Gaethje. Number three, Dustin Poirier. you got to have Dustin in your top five or it doesn't count, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. I and agree. number two, I have Islam. And number one, I have Charles because I will not disrespect the champ. Fair enough. Yeah. Will not. Uh, it's not a few, just a few omissions. Nobody to, else star you. A few omissions, and I feel bad. Michael Chandler, you know. He hasn't been around the, he didn't make anyone's list. He hasn't been and around Dariush. the promotion as long. Yeah, you got Dariush. But then we got some other guys like uh, Damir Ismagulov. I think he's still running hot. Is it like tw 14, well, I think that, 16? Not and having Chandler crazy. in there is the whole point of this, right? That you can see that guys can get into these rankings and we still maybe don't think that that's exactly how it pans well, and out. And that's but how good the division is. Yeah, it's in the same just as Just like what we talked yeah. about at, at Bantamweight. I oh mean, my you word, could... sorry. News just in. This is embarrassing. I just said like 16 and 0. Demir is a good love. 24 and 1. 24 and 1. Sorry yeah. about that, Demir, but I'm a big fan. He's very, very good. Jalen Turner, shout out to him as yeah. well. He's on the up. They've got some big fights coming up as well. Um, I wonder if you overplayed him or underplayed him going from 16 and 0 to 24 and 1. Hmm. You gave him eight wins, but he's no longer undefeated. <laughs> what would you rather be? I mean, anyway. 19 fight win streak, huh? Yeah, shorter than that. That's pretty good. You know that that didn't come from me because I got all my maths wrong. So I've just literally <laughs> taken that information and delivered it. Uh, 12 divisions in the UFC. We've been focusing on two today, two of the hottest as well. But we're now going to consider our three best divisions. So we want you to kind of take stock of who's performing so well right now and compile that list. One to three. Truck Lords, who are we going with first? Me. Okay. All right. So for me, at number three, I think it's lightweight. Because I just believe that the top is a bit <clears throat> separated from the rest. Mm -hmm. I think that Islam, Charles, get, I mean, those guys are far ahead of everyone else. We'll see if Gamrat is on that level and Sarukian as time passes. Featherweight, I believe that you have another situation where it's clear. It's Volkanovski, but then Holloway's right behind him. But then you also got those other guys like Yair and Cater and Josh Emmett and so many others in this division, at number one, no, Bantamweight. I think that when you have a division that has so many former champions, yeah, so many current champions, champions, yeah, right. this division is as stacked as it gets. And you got all these exciting young guys mm -hmm. still coming up in the division. I think Bantamweight is clearly the best division. Clearly? Yeah, I think, I think, it's, I think it's clearly the best division. Yeah. I mean, you got those, those names that we know. You also got Yanez, the fantastic Mexican boxer. Yeah. 
You also have Ricky Simone, you know, Song Yudong, who just fought so valiant, like Corey Sandhagen. Crazy Hagen, off the top of your Umar. head, you can remember all Yeah, these all guys. these guys, like, no, I'm getting, I'm getting some of these, but all these guys, <laughs> I know. But, like, it's tremendous. Uh, okay. It's tremendous what this division is. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I went a little different. Um, I went number three welterweight. There isn't a division in the UFC that has more potential number one pound for pound guys in it. Rachmanov, Chimaev, Usman just was. Edwards just beat him. Where does he go now? There's like multiple guys. You're like, this guy could be number one pound for pound one day with the right wins. Uh, I have one A, one B lightweight and bantamweight. I went bantamweight second best because I think the top 10 of bantamweight is the best in mixed martial arts, but the top 20, top 50, top 100 of lightweight dwarfs every other division. There's a reason why every promotion in mixed martial arts has a great lightweight division because there's just a million of them. Yeah. So I think the the depth of lightweight makes it number one for me, but I will take the top 10 Bantamweight right now over lightweight. Okay. Mm, Thank you, RJ. Paul? I have Bantamweight at at number one, even over my own lightweight division at the moment. I just think those there's so many damn good Bantamweights right now that it's it's clear. Middleweight. Then then I have lightweight. And I think just to be different, I, I threw middleweight in there. I think we've had a lot of fight nights where we've been having like, You're gonna have to work hard here. Paul. Think yeah, you very carefully. You gotta, you gotta Choose really your sell this one. Paul, we gotta sell champion this one that's like to lapping me. the division. Yeah, come on, yeah. come on, sell me. Yeah, come yeah, on, Paul. Go to work now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're gonna have that championship on the line, and I think somebody like Pajeda is, uh, you know, and Izzy is pound for pound one of the best guys in the world. So. I don't think tell, that does. Why don't you <laughs> tell him? That? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that does it, Paul. Sonia. No, there's Back no dispute. Up, bro. I the harder you, know, you slam, division, the, harder you slam your paper, the better you I make actually, your point. I yeah, actually right? just thought, as RJ said this, I probably should have changed that to welterweight. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tried to be different. I tried to give some shine to the middleweights. Robert Whitaker is one of my favorite guys in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, doing your list after me, you're just kind of doomed for failure. Yeah. It's, it's a shame, well, Can I have some candy ten? now? Yeah, well, no, you don't deserve any after that. <laughs> no. Don't be so ridiculous. Um, I mean, I can't add much more to what you guys have said, but for me, the top the top division right now is Bantam. I've always been a fan of the little guys as well, so I think I'm, I'm always a little biased because they're so technical. We see so much action from them, but the strength and depth of that division, three, three guys that have held gold or c- continue to hold gold in there, I think that speaks volumes. Oh, look at that. And I'm so lightweight, welterweight, same thing as ever. Well, it, sometimes I results know. are I mean, what they I are, Paul. Like I like featherweight, huh? I like featherweight. Yeah. Well, I thought about featherweights, but we do have a guy who's very dominant at the moment who is now but looking to go up. Funny, to, I didn't like, hear you say that to DC when he said that. Well, because you didn't chirp up the guy just and come we have a lot of guys. We have a lot of guys well, coming through. I didn't, I didn't pin everything on one guy who's yeah, just come over from also, kickboxing. I didn't either. There's <laughs> a lot of good guys. <laughs> but also, like, say that to him too next time. At featherweight, time. right, Max and them had two very close fights before the third fight was dominant. So it's not like Volkanovski's been dominating the division like Izzy has. Yeah, okay, okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, apparently, there's what am I here? Five, five goals of five, five bands and weights in the top twelve have held UFC gold. That's crazy. It's yeah, it's far That's and away crazy. Best. So, lightweight. I mean, you you you, you can't avoid that. And welterweight. You've got to give some love to welterweight. Colby Covington. Just the strength. Hamzat Chimaev. So many fighters in there that could get that number one spot. That could that get play? gold. Anyway, Laura, going what last you got? really sucks because you guys said a lot of really smart Squeeze things. Squeeze them out. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't, Laura. So go ahead. No, no, it's it's okay. Uh, number number three, I have welterweight. Number back. two, I have lightweight. And number one, I have bantamweight. To me, boring. <laughs> correct. There's just there's also just the right answer. Um, yes. To me, bantamweight, it's it's not. I mean, it is everything we've all said, but it's also like. How many generations are represented? There's so many guys coming up. The Adrian Yanez's of the world, the Umar Nurmagomedov's of the world. And then you've got real OGs like Dom and TJ. Mm -hmm. And then you've got that middle group that just completely, you could, we did it earlier. You could interchange about anybody in the top 15 and make great fights. We've got the number 11 ranked guy facing the number one ranked guy, and we don't feel ridiculous about it because yeah, that's, there's that's, so much yeah, parody in that division. There you go. That's the, I mean, I made a point. Let's just move on. <laughs> Props to Laura point. for not I trying to make straw weight a thing on this list. No. I was going to try to make women's women's featherweight. But <laughs> featherweight. But there's not enough people to even rank it. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we have more to division. talk about here. I'd like to, uh, to focus on another bantamweight fixture that we've got coming up. Closer look at the bantamweight matchup between Peter Yan and Sean O'Malley.
Yo que Sean O'Malley is an absolute star in the making. People talk about him having it. Not only does he have it, this dude can straight up fight. My fighting style, it's just a flow. I find people's chins. That's what I do. Oh! The way that he manages range and distance, and the way he knocks people out. It's second to none in the division. It's just my style. I don't just knock people out. I change people's careers. Oh! And now another right hand! Going into every single fight I've had, it's how Sean gonna knock out this guy. Oh! Sean O'Malley oh! gets another highlight for the real! This fight, people are worried for me, and I love that, because now I get to really go out there and show where my skill set's at. Welcome to the Sugar Show, everybody! На сегодняшний день я думаю, что это внутренний огонь, который движет мной. Есть еще некоторые моменты, которые хочется доказать самому себе и, конечно же, сделать очередной забег за титул. He is so physically intimidating, so strong, so aggressive, and so damn ruthless. I mean, he just breaks people down. Безусловно, Амели, он имеет навыки, но хайпа немножко больше, чем его, так скажем, бойцовского полка, там интеллекта, не знаю. Хайп этот хочется потушить. People look at him like he's this absolute killer, but I believe in my skill set. I have a longer reach, and I do believe I'm gonna go in there and bounce my hands off his face until he falls. Oh, the sugar show! I'm not serious, I'm just, I think I'm the best as a fighter, дать вот этот отпор. Я думаю, что смогу ему это дать. И сомневаюсь, что он выдержит это. This fight is how superstars get creative. UFC 280, I put Peter face first into the canvas in Abu Dhabi. All right, let's put these guys side by side then. And I mean, it makes great reading for O'Malley fans. Just that strike rate is far ahead of Piotr Jan. Obviously he hasn't faced the same level of competition, I will say that, but I also like the striking accuracy. An absolute sharpshooter, Laura. And with, with this matchup, what is it that interests you most? I think I'm interested to see how much Jan is gonna try to push the grappling and how yeah. much Sean is gonna be able to keep keep it on the feet because Sean needs to have that distance. He's gotta get in his flow. He's gotta be able to get his kicks off, find his rhythm, and if Jan gets right in his face like he does everybody else and really makes this a grappling match, I, I think we're going to figure out whether O'Malley, you know, has that takedown defense that he's going to need to have. But I will say, too, for Piotr Jan, he kind of has a style that plays into Sean's game in terms of on the feet because he does come more straightforward than like a TJ Dillashaw who, who cuts a lot of angles and, and is constantly changing stances mid-combination. So, I don't know. This, this is a better matchup than I think the odds makers are certainly seeing it as because I don't think that it should be. And actually, those have really evened up now that I'm looking at them because when they opened up, Jan was like a massive, massive favorite. I mean, he's still a big yeah, favorite, but he's it was big, way bigger yeah. than that. No, let me tell you something. The reason Sean O'Malley wants this fight, he said that Piotr was the only one that wasn't matched up. It also is a pretty good matchup for him on paper because if you Look at the guys in the top five. You have Marab, who's going to constantly be trying yeah. to take him down. You have guys like Aljo, who would be trying to take him down. Dillashaw would be trying to take him down or clinch him. Piotrian doesn't seem to be that guy that's going to be chasing takedowns. But the issue is, Piotr is as good of a pure boxer as there is in the entire UFC. Yeah. So it makes for a very interesting matchup. My biggest wonder in this fight is, how long does Piotr Jan take mm. before he gets going? Because if you've mm -hmm. seen him, and we've seen him in championship winning performances, where we remember the San Hagen fight, right? Yeah. We thought we were calling it next to the octagon going, man, San Hagen's getting out ahead of him mm -hmm. because Piotr was taking his time to build his reads, process information. We called him a computer. How he gets his information and he breaks it all down, then he starts to go down the path. He doesn't have that time. 
but 25 then, minutes this Early time. in his career, he was not known as a slow starter. Yeah, but the problem is, because he had as the, the competition has raised, he has become more of a, a, a slow starter and a guy that does that. And why wouldn't you? It allowed for him to become the UFC champion. Is, is Sean O'Malley a fast starter, though? No, and that's the problem. The slower the fight goes, the better it is for O'Malley. Because even in the Munoz fight, we don't know who won round one because nobody did anything. Yeah. And if you're the better guy or you believe you're the better guy, if you're just standing and nothing's happening, you're allowing them to base Rose Nami Yunus versus Carlos Barza. They Let's did not. nothing, but Let's they, not no, I'm saying, <laughs> they did nothing. So even if Rose was the better fighter, they were basing or judging the fight on whatever they could. Yeah, whatever if actually. If Jan happened, is yeah. the better fighter and he's not doing anything, Sean O'Malley's in the fight. And they yeah, but still because and Sean's the taller, longer guy, right? That's where I think he's got, Jan has got to get after it a little bit because he can't sit on the outside unless he's leg kicking and he's attacking that calf, which I think is also going to be a big approach for Piotr Jan going into this one because we saw what Cheeto was able to do when he attacked those legs. When you're that frame and you're that big and tall of a, a bantamweight, people are going to try to chop down O'Malley those legs. O'Malley mad when people say that his opponent should leg kick him because he felt like he checked the leg kicks against Munoz, but you look at the judges' scorecards, Munoz won that first round on damage. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was the damage that the judges viewed because it's much harder to read the damage of a check than it is to look mm -hmm. at someone landing a kick and see that damage. I mean, we all know what it feels like to have a, a check or a kick checked, and it's awful. But it's it's difficult to see whether that's really effective or not. I mean, that's pretty much all Pedro did in that fight. And yeah, in the second was. round, Sean really started to find his range and come on. And then, of course, we had the weird ending to it all. I just, but, I don't know. But even even if Piotr Jan is more aggressive. Does that play into O'Malley's plan? His yeah, counter well, he wants is to counter -strike. His counter striking. One hundred percent. And Sean is so good striking effectively while moving backward. That's yeah, one of that's the things. His game. He's, so, he's so good at, and very few he people. He wants to are move that, his head. Yes. Come counter. Well, that's why we just saw in the highlight. Moutinho so oh, bad. Yeah. Because Moutinho just was moving pressing. forward, mm -hmm. and Sean's just like sliding, boom, moving, boom. He's a longer guy, so Jan is going to have to take some things. To get in the range, the, the the question is, how much can he do when he goes through the fire to get to where he wants to get? And what does he do once he is where he wants to be? we got our next segment, folks. So this one is called Future Stars. Now, Paul, your BFF, your old BFF, Conor McGregor, typical example of someone who, who knows how to work the hype machine. Mm -hmm. We're looking for our next pay-per-view stars, guys that really move the needle. And I'm going to go to you, Paul. First. I've got, I've got some names. I've got some names. So these are under, no pay -per -view under main 30, event. and they have not had pay-per-view main events for anybody at home. Who's so they will be potentially track. future stars. Under yes. 30 years young. Who 30 you got years young. Patty Pimblett is on my list. Patty the Batty moves the freaking. Oh, game. Patty yeah. the okay. Batty. Yeah. Look I, at that. I know Ooh. he hasn't been quite <laughs> tested yet, but it doesn't take away from his star capability. The guy is fun. He's crazy. He goes for it. People like to see him. He sells out arenas. It's He's marketable as hell. Sean oh, yeah. O'Malley. Yeah. Come on now. If he yeah. goes out there and puts on a performance on Saturday night, it, th this kid could be on pay-per-views all over the place, selling selling pay-per-views, become a champion someday if he can keep winning. And uh, he, shout out to you, John UK. I got Tom Aspinall on this list. I feel you like he giving all the guys some Especially love. over that side, he can really headline a lot of big fights. This won't mean a lot for you guys, but he was just on a, a show called Question of Sports wow. on, on BBC. Thank you, RJ. That's the reaction I was looking for. Oh, my God. It is that massive. It's, it's like where all of the biggest sports stars get to go on there, and it's like a panel show, and they have a little fun talk about some trivia in sport. He's already there, and it's such a big win for us, the UFC, and Tom personally. So just wanted to throw that in there. Just and please continue. He won't, be, he won't be the only one with Tom Aspinall, so he, he could have saved <laughs> What's that? You say I was wrong? No, I said you won't be the only one with oh, Tom Aspinall. Oh, all right. Uh, I didn't even finish. I could do it again. Go ahead, finish. No, carry on, carry on, carry on. Ricci's already so kicking me. I said three, you got five. Yeah. 
uh, on this list too because I, I just think he's so damn good. He likes to talk we, a good bit of smack. I don't think he's been given the spotlight. We hung out with Tupper a little yeah. bit, so we know he's a superstar. We know he's a superstar. <laughs> we go, go hang out with him in Spain. He wants me. He wants me to come to Spain. Uh, and then I got Armin Sarukian as well. You love that there. Sarukian. I, I think he's so freaking good, man. If yeah. you, do you he's follow him on the socials? Yeah. Do you follow him on the socials, Armin Sarukian? His father's a very wealthy man, and he like saw, drives all these supercars. He's got the uh, all-terrain buggy. Then the next thing, he's on snowmobiles. Oh, he doesn't need you the know. money. Then I'm taking him off my list. Okay, <laughs> taking him off my list. Gamrot's back on. <laughs> all right, going with the uh, the no-brainer. I think the whole reason we did this list was for Patty the Batty, right? So he's on there, obviously. And I also feel like he's divorced from having to win to be Mark. Kind of like a Nate Diaz thing, mm -hmm. where mm. that the. You know, the popularity is there regardless of win or losing. Sean O'Malley, again, for all the reasons you all brought up. Bryce Mitchell has a, an infectious personality. Flat Earth. <laughs> and he's got a built-in fan base on the very, very dark areas of the Internet yeah. where you get weird <laughs> stuff. And so yeah. I feel like there's an attraction there. And Just look, socks. look at the yeah. sunshine. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> my I'm not here that <laughs> I know this huh? crunchy stuff. Never song. mind. <laughs> we'll come back to it. R-rated. <laughs> May I go? <laughs> okay. About. Hamza okay. Jemayev, because I think he could be number one pound for pound in the world one day. Couldn't go on a great welterweight run. And uh, Derek and Graphics made sure to make sure that I mentioned Tracy Cortez. I'm <laughs> <laughs> actually obligated to mention Tracy There's a Cortez. lot of our favorite fighters. Very, <laughs> very, very popular fighter with a lot of uh, marketable features. <laughs> yes. Future. future. <clears throat> marketable future. Steady. Steady on there, big guy. Steady. Uh, my top five. Oh, Paddy the oh, Paddy. Yeah? Take him off my list. <laughs> okay. uh, Ilya Taporia, I share yeah, that. Nice. I think he's he's already got a huge fan base. He's a mega star in Europe. He's got all these celebrity friends as well. Guy looks the part too. I mean, who doesn't love a chess piece like that? Fantastic. Um, not like him, else. Terence McKinney. I think that guy has... <laughs> I'm not even looking in your direction right now. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm about, like, yeah. Um, <laughs> We're falling apart. That was he, to be off camera. <laughs> Terence is a guy who I think works the social game really, really well right now. I think he can back it up the results. Yeah. If you carry on knocking people the hell out like he does, mm. I think he's going to rise he, to the top. Uh, so. McKinney reached out to me. I'm going to be kind of like mentoring him a little bit. as That's he. smart. Well, yeah. I don't know whether I, that will stay in there then. Let's see how <laughs> the future goes. Uh, Sean O'Malley and... Uh, Tom Aspinall. Nice. Yeah. That is Big Tom. Oh, notable omission was Umar Namagamedov. I think he's got such a strong fan base that, and he can hang off the coattails of his family members, but on his own, I think he could be a really big star. All right. Those are good lists. I'm not going to knock anybody's list. Those are good lists. Uh, I'm going to go Sean O'Malley, Patty Pimblett, Shavkat. No surprise. I love me some Shavkat Rabinov. Uh, Hamzat Shemaev. I mean, how do how did you guys not? He hasn't. Yeah, he made was on RJ. He was on, no, he hasn't. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah. And then, Bo Nickel, you guys. Bo Nickel. Yeah, these yeah. guys are crazy. I, I know it's premature, a little it's premature, like not... but I, I think anybody that watches him fight, anybody no. that's uh, heard about his training, knows that he is rocketing right to no. the top. And I had an honorable mention. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Honorable mention to Casey O'Neill. She's coming off a major knee surgery, mm. so she's been out of the game a little bit. But that woman is the truth. I tell you what, she, she is going to be a factor in that division. As soon as she gets healthy, I wish her the best, and I just freaking love her. She's good on the mic, too. She's can, beautiful. She's talented. All of it. Can I just say, props to the Europeans getting a whole bunch of mentions, yeah. and Casey with, with Australia as well. But, yeah. you know, there's Scottish blood there. I, you know, thank you all. Maybe we're all trying to make you feel you well. Guys are, you guys, they you made guys us do it. I know, I know you're not. You guys are doing good. Are you guys ready for my list? Can I give you my list? Yeah, yeah, please. All right. Number five. You mean you Bryce, haven't given I, it already? Yeah, no, oh, yeah. Wow. Bryce Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell at number five because may, while you may not, people like Bryce Mitchell, there's a ton of people that love Bryce Mitchell. And he is infectious. Oh, he's hilarious. He, yeah, he's, he's, he's hilarious. He's, people love Bryce Mitchell. Uh, Bo Nickel. Bo Nickel's fighting on the pay-per-view. I think Bo Nickel is going to fight on the main card of the pay-per-view in his first official fight. That's crazy. Yeah. That's Bo Nickel, three-time NCAA yes. champ and the man. Boxed his entire life. Sean O'Malley, because we, what all you guys said, Patty the Batty mm -hmm. and Hamza mm -hmm. Chimaev. Mm -hmm. Hamza Chimaev has not made a video pay-per-view yet because of what he did with the weightness and everything, but this guy's a star. Mm -hmm. And the way to become a star is that. win and say stuff like, Brother, um, I said, dude, uh, why why would people buy the pay-per-view if you just think Nate Diaz is so trash? 
He goes, brother, everybody want to see somebody get killed. <laughs> I was oh like, yeah. God. The way that he phrased things yeah, it was crazy. terrifying. What's, you know, and what's, people absolutely loved it. What's fascinating to me is there was a time where the belief was that you had to be a good English speaker to be a real star. And that has have, changed. You got to have broken ha English. Habib has changed <laughs> yeah. that. Hamzat has changed that. I mean, that some English is obviously a huge help. But it really is. It really is what you just said. I mean, we... I you want to see people talk. Yeah. <laughs> also, he the way that. people phrase things, I'll never forget when Hamzat said, said around to me, I can't remember who it was, he says, I'll go to this guy, I will beat him, I will take his heart, I put it in a cake, I bring it back yeah, yeah. to Sweden and eat yeah. it. I'm like, oh my God. He said yeah. to me, he said to me, he where goes, does that I come from? Know, hey, you, know, you know what Hamzat, <laughs> Hamzat goes, Hamzat goes, uh, I said, how much has your it's life changed? Do you it's love the celebrity? He goes, brother, I, sometimes, but... Sometimes I take my coffee, some guy he'll eat, kill, smash. He goes, I don't want to do this. He goes, I just want to drink my coffee. He said he can't even go to a coffee shop now. No. Oh, he's Not a massive now. star. And yeah, he's a massive star. Massive. It is that time of year, the spooky season, okay, let's folks. Go. So we let's have, go. well, see, we have the, the whiteboards at the ready just around the corner. Let's test your knowledge of the spooky holiday, shall we? Oh. I will be awful. I will be awful. Not, this, is Halloween not big in the It's beginning? getting bigger. It's getting bigger. But I kind of feel like I missed the boat. So we love it in America. We have a number of we questions here. Quite a few, in fact. <laughs> so here we go. Question number one. What was the original name of Halloween? Halloween. Derived from the night before All Saints Day. What was the original name of Halloween derived from the night before All Saints Day? Four, three, Two, one, turn them. Oh, it's all. <laughs> old. 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 Hallows. How e. do you know that? Well done. How do you guys know that? Number two. What? No, Paul is put Paul old. Doesn't. Paul put old. Come We're on. giving it, it to me. Paul. Okay, okay. Come on, then. Okay, that's such a pity point. <laughs> Question number two. What is the name of the villain in the Halloween horror movie series? What is the name of the villain in the Halloween horror movie series? Scary dude. There he is. Five, four, three, two, one. Michael Myers. Are we done? Well done, everyone. Yeah. Good stuff. Question number three. Spelled Which ingredient cannot, cannot be found in the popular Halloween confection, candy corn? Is it corn, sugar, corn syrup, or carnauba wax? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I think we all it's know what this of, one is. I think carbon and wax is Three, like made out of bugs. Two, one. Turn them around, please. There you go, corn. Well done. <laughs> Question number four. There ain't no corn and candy corn. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote the eerie poem, The Raven? Who wrote the eerie poem? Stop talking. Thanks, Laura. I think I'm that's like what I'm too. planning to do. <laughs> no, I want you to stop. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. I got it. Odds on for Paul here. Paul, what have you even... What have oh, you... that was close. Edgar Allan Poe, baby. I had no Edgar idea. Allan Poe. I had no idea. My memory is the worst when someone's talking. I'm losing talking. my bill. I used to read all those Moving along. stories. Question number five. What is the most popular Halloween costume of 2021? I'll give you a hint. It's more traditionally a female costume. Most popular Halloween costume of last year. It is more traditionally a female costume. Come on, you're under pressure. Here. I mean, geez, how much longer did it get? I know. Right? Uh, Five, four, three, two, one, turn them. So, as, are you, like, sorry, <laughs> can, can someone put a, can we put a single on Laura, please, right now? <laughs> what? Okay, so no, it's a, what? It's a sexy witch. Everybody's yeah. a sexy how witch. Can, yeah, like, how can five-year-old kids be turning up in a, Slutty you ghost. You don't give them the slutty version of well, the ghost. They're just a regular. <laughs> Obviously, John, that's they're just awful. a regular and ghost. Is it more oh my that. god. Jeez. All right, question number six. Who encountered the headless horseman one fatal night in the Gothic story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow? Oh my god. Who encountered the headless horseman one fatal night in the Gothic story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow? I don't know. I can't uh, think of the name off the top I of my head. I can't remember his last name. I remember watching Can the someone in the gallery the tell me how to pronounce it? Just, just, I, 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 okay. don't, I know his first name, but I don't know his last name. Three, two, one, 
Uh, Bod Crank. I, I, I gotta give you guys. You guys, you guys gotta give it to me. Just mine. Ichabod. Ichabod. I, I, yes, I, yes. I, I say give him Ichabod. Mind. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. You gotta give it to me. Fuck. Another Thank pity you. point. Oh, that one makes good. me mad. I, I remember the cartoon as a kid. Yes. When he's like on the horse. The pumpkin. He's like, <laughs> he's like scared. Good. How's it going? <laughs> oh, look at this guy. Oh yeah. Oh. Look at the screen there. Oh. oh. Question number seven, there's a clue. The Shining oh, star, Jack Nicholson, be. who is the famous horror author that wrote the book for which the film is based? God, oh, they've made that a difficult one to ask. I know who wrote guy, the book? I know it's the guy that got to make Freddy Krueger. Who wrote the no. book oh, that the film, The Shining, was based off? Oh. Got this one. Jack Nicholson. Shout out to my legend. mom. Are we ready? Three, two, one, turn them. I might have spelled his first Stephen, Stephen King. Stephen oh my King. God, it's Stephen King. Yeah. Only half, only half a point all, for Paul because it it's Stephen, Stephen with a PH. PH, right? Yeah, you're good. Stop. Question number eight. What is the brown, orange-ish, fluffy ingredient found in most chocolate bars? Here's a hint. Musketi Three Musketeers is comprised mostly of this. So what is that brown, <laughs> orange-ish, fluffy ingredient that you find in most chocolate bars? I love this stuff. You do? Yeah. I don't know what it's called. And we're going to say, I say it differently to you guys in like nougat? Uh, the US. You wrote Nugent. Like <laughs> what nougat? the hell? Nugent. What is I don't that? I how to spell it, but <laughs> yeah, how do you spell N it? Nougat? Nuggets? Nougat. It's nugget. nougat. Okay. Seven for Laura, six oh, for Paul, five for DC. It's tight. Ooh. It's tight. We have oh, two left, God. though. Question number nine. Who directed the Halloween Christmas movie The Nightmare Before Christmas? Who directed the Halloween, kind of Halloween Christmassy movie, The Lord Nightmare Before Christmas? I do love this. The movie. spooky Christmas movie. Let's, let's flip them. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, you're not right there, DC. How Tim do you guys Burton? know yeah, this? Good stuff. Actually, even Edward. I knew that, and I'm stupid. More, huh? Edward Scissorhands. Huh? You, Last no, question. I missed one, too. No pressure, Laura, but you win this, you take it. Name Laura's gonna win. Name of the three most popular candies on Halloween according to Thrill List. Name of the three most popular candies on Halloween according to Thrill List. Name name you one. You only need to name you only need one well, of I mean, the most popular the, candies. The... Name one of the three. Corn. I'm not So it's on Halloween. Well, you know when what? they're sold on Halloween okay, specifically. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, no, we have taken this from an official listing. Can we just, can we just, can Paul and I okay. just bite to the Turn them, three, two, one. So Reese's. I he didn't get it. Yeah, you got it. You got Reese's. But was the sweet tart, was the sweet tart one? No. Okay. Yeah, what is it, a Reese's what? Is it a cup or is it a, a cup. Reese's, Reese's cup? cup? Peanut butter cup. Reese's peanut butter cup. Okay. She's only saying that because Paul has cup. Therefore you win. Yes! We just needed you to define How, your answer. Is there a little another bit more. type of Reese's? Jeez. Yeah, there's Reese's Laura pieces. Wins. Well done. Oh, well, well obviously done, Laura. not. The real Reese's. No, you're goddamn candy. Exactly. Um, yeah. DC, will you please bring me my belt? I don't feel like standing up. I'm tired. I was just hoping that you forgot. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. If I would have got it, come on. I'm going to need you to be great. Bring that right on over. Sorry, I, I gotta walk over. Try that, that again. Yep. I'm not competitive. Ah, dang, Paul. Would you For three? Um, I can't believe you didn't knock you this over. Completely flipped out, I'm gonna let you off the hook because you were really affected by no, that No, 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 yeah, please, I'm please, upset. I'm please. Upset. Thank you, I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna make yeah, John spin the wheel. Get John, the rookie. All right, yeah, okay, new kid. Put it on me, sir. It's gonna be, oh, I know oh, what it's gonna be. Oh, there you go. I, uh, <laughs> okay, Which, I'm gonna come the long way around. There you now. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, flying low out here. Looks good, oh. good. Well, that was close. You're the champion, no one saw Laura. That? Okay. You're the champion. What happened Did there, Did you have your zipper down on live television? I don't, I don't think we had a close-up shot. Not that you'd need it. <laughs> I had it. <laughs> Telescopic lens. Size we can see that one. Hey, we can see that one. You, hush your, you, you hush your dirty mouth. Right. <laughs> What's the technique here? Do I go? Do I really give it some? No, or? no, no. no. Gentle, very, gentle push. Yeah. A gentle push. I've yeah. been known You're for that. You're too strong. Okay, it's, thank you. Yeah, solid. Good, good. I get that right? You did. Oh, oh what, what a shocker. shocker. What a shocker. It's a shocker. That. Welcome to the show. Man, right, thank welcome you. to the show, homie. Do this is no this problem for me since I used to be an electrician one time. time. But I was that good go. that I never that used to experience this. this. What do you mean, both of them? Yep. Yeah, both of them. Oh, yeah, both That's of them. how the current travels through your entire body. Yeah. Right. You this don't have is... a pacemaker, right? Then we put you in a bucket of water. <sighs> yeah, just to... What are you doing, yeah. DC? Well, I'm, I'm going to have this for my personal... Oh, yeah, that's a good do? point. You've never done the shocker? quick enough. 
We just don't, you don't know when it's going to happen? It. No. I missed it. <laughs> now you do. <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't yelp. Did you Look enjoy that? Yelp. That was beautiful. That's Is got me really going. Right? I'm ready to go. When we gonna, when's this show going to start? <laughs> you, <laughs> favorite candies we have, we've had, uh, you know, on Halloween. Mine? Yeah. Hey, what were the other two on the uh, candy? What were the other two? Wait, oh, I was say sweet tarts. Snickers, Snickers were the other No sweet tarts. <laughs> Oh. Twix and Snickers. Were I know we keep favorites. talking to the producers, like oh, the yeah, audience. Oh sorry, can hear at them. home, guys. Yeah. It was also Twix. I mean, I've done it three Snickers. times now, Paul. But if you want to, you know. Anyway, what, what, what do you like, though? What do you like? I, I forget. Favorite candy. <laughs> Kit Kat. Oh, I love Kit Kats. I think I put Reese. Did I put Reese's too? No, you put Kit Kat. There you go. Oh, you lucky oh, guy. Oh my God, I love. I love oh. Kit Kat. Easy. So I'll, I'll say this right now. You know, when I was growing up, I always went to what we would call. Uh, the white neighborhood because they gave full <laughs> bars. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I grew up at, they didn't give full bars. So I would love to go to the white neighborhood and get a full bar of Snickers. Is there a Snickers? They gave you a full? There you go. From a white guy. Full bar right there from a white guy. neighborhood. Like, it's like being eight years old in Louisiana again. Laura, what was your confectionery of choice on Halloween? I don't remember. I, as a kid, I loved a good ring pop because you can just, it's jewelry. I mean, you can wear the key. We accept this Lawrence ring. Is crazy. Why is it so big? <laughs> Thank you. That's what she. Am I in the, <laughs> is John unzipped again? <laughs> <laughs> is John unzipped again? Oh dear. Uh, I I had Babe oh, Ruth. Oh, there's lots of them in here. Because I was like so like cheap. Wasn't I was like, a, oh, this is the he, heaviest one. Wasn't he a? Wasn't he a? It's the most bag for your buck. Wasn't he a high school guy? Yeah. Baseball player. Babe Ruth for me. Do you know what's really upsetting about this? When they asked me this. My favorite was a Mars bar, but I don't do dairy these days, so I can't, mm. I can't get involved. We make an exception. There so who go. would like the Mars bar? Paul? This helps you work, like rest, starving. and play. Give Paul the Mars okay. bar. Of course you will. You love a snack. He's, right, he can, while you guys so are munching on your candy he, bars, we're going to do some rapid fire. The order for rapid fire is Laura, Paul, DC. Remember, the name of the segment is you rapid hate, fire. You hate me Rapid. OK. Can you take it? <laughs> Are you ready, Laura? What color did you go okay. with? Paul, you need to go to the bathroom. Okay. Uh, buy or sell? If Charles Oliveira re regains his title, Habib will fight him someday. Laura? No. I think Habib is... Paul. Rapid, Laura. Dumb. God. Oh, no, sell. no, he's dumb. DC. Sell. sell. He's done. Sell, sell, sell. Habib's done. Okay. So much pressure. Well, yeah. well they're telling me rapid. Well, I'm only going by the rules. Right. Number two, path towards goat. True or false that Charles or Islam can pass Habib as the lightweight goat someday? Yes, Charles is very close. Is true. that true or true. false? True. Sorry. Paul. True. True. <laughs> true. I think okay. that in time, though, they've got to. No, I mean, no, no, I didn't no. ask for an explanation. No, no. They've got a lot. <laughs> they've got to do a lot. Charles yes. is close. Fair enough. Okay. Question Charles number three: Bigger X factor, Oliveira's striking or Makachev's submission defense? Mm. Ooh. Bigger mm. X factor. I think Makachev's submission defense, because this is going to end up on the ground, and he's going to have to have some sturdy defense. I'm going to go with Charles Oliveira striking because I've said it. And the whole buildup of this thing that I think that it could be the big difference in this fight. I'm going to say Charles is striking because I think that's Oliveira's clearest path to victory is to knock him out mm -hmm. because we've seen Islam get knocked out before. Mm -hmm. So I would think his striking. Don't I think that I think the submission defense will hold up. Don't you think it ends up on the on the ground, though? Yeah, it does. But I mean, Charles in his stand-up is so good. Oh, I know. He's so good. Okay, question number four. Over under, 20 significant strikes landed by Charles Oliveira on Islam. The record stands at 13. Wait, on Islam. the most somebody's landed on him is 13? That's crazy. That's so, crazy. Over That's under, crazy. 20 significant Bro, strikes. He's on top <laughs> by just mauling people most of the time. I'm going over. I mean, that's a pretty low number. For 20? Hey. Mm, mm, mm. It's kind of crazy. I'm going to go over. It's kind of crazy that we have to even think about whether or not it's going to be 20. It's I know, Charles right? Oliveira. In a five-round fight. Charles Oliveira will land 20 strikes. Thank because you. Charles Oliveira strikes. lands 20 strikes in two Third, minutes. First 30 seconds. 20 fight. knees. Yeah. I reckon he's going to get close to 20 knees, maybe. I don't know. Why did I say that? I don't know. Uh, he, question number five. Knees, yeah, he's getting taken probably not. down. Exactly. got to be careful with that. Uh, over under two minutes before a takedown attempt, Oliveira versus Makachev. 
Over under two minutes before a takedown. It's over. Nice. I'm going to go over. I, yeah. th I think they'll strike for a while. Under. Yeah, under for me. Okay. Don't know what side it comes from, but somebody's getting taken down quickly. Next one. True or false? Or at least trying. At least trying. Sterling and Dillashaw touch gloves before the fight. True or false? False. 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 TJ is not touching uh -oh. gloves no after all that has been happening in the build. Next. Buy or sell? TJ Dillashaw I mean, becoming can a... Can I be honest? Can I just say something? Of course. This is too... F this is, like, too fucking rapid. It is too fast. Like, it's too rapid. I know. Like, I get... Like, this is... This is, like... This is no... Because, like... It's because we got the principal here, and he's, like, like staring at you, and he's, like, moving on before we're even done. I didn't realize like, I was so intimidating, no, like, DC. <laughs> it's, crazy. it's crazy how rapid You're, thinking, you're okay. Laura and I here every so time. Good. Like, we, we never go this rapid. Like, no. this is crazy. No. I mean, well, I'll take your feedback. You're less... You're less I'll mean take... when you got a bow tie on. Put your bow tie back on. <laughs> <laughs> I will take this constructive criticism. I'm going to slow the plate the pace okay, down. Please. Okay. It's like hard. Yeah. <laughs> <I like yourself. laughs> TJ Dillashaw becoming a three time UFC champion makes him the Bantamweight GOAT. We had this discussion earlier. It's so close. It's so close. It's so close, but I it's, I have to give it to Dom. Her oh. your teeth are so purple right now. Are they really? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> His teeth are so purple. Uh, I, Ew. I, the thing is, you've you've worked hard to get those pearly whites looking. Oh damn it! And yeah, now uh, yep. that's pearly. a pop. Hey, and imagine kids would love that. Um, <laughs> Buy or sell that one, Paul. I'm gonna sell. I'm gonna sell. I think. Uh, yeah, sell. DC. Buy or sell. I, I sell. I can't. Uh, I can't just ignore everything. Okay. Next up, who is five rounds better for, Aljo or TJ? Hmm. That's a good Ooh. one. Sorry, I'm trying to wash this off of my teeth. It's going to take a big old iron brush to get that off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go. I like it for Aljo. I like it for Aljo because I think that he can find those moments where he can control the fight and, and get, like, the back or whatever and burn time. Yeah, I, I, I think it favors um, Aljamain as well, just because of his ground control and the way he drags people. Where did you get those? Son, where did you have those? You like these? Where did you just... I, I, I honestly... Just these old I, things? <laughs> I just my Top Gun glasses. Really? Doesn't, does, sorry, DC, doesn't actually... Doesn't three rounds favor Aljamain? If, so, if he gets the back and he burns hey, the clock, then you've got less time yeah. to... I actually It's also got Dillashaw. more time to submit him, too. I think Dillashaw. Okay. I think it favors Dillashaw because... For as good as Aljo did in the fight against Piotr, those last two rounds he lost. He mm. won the first three. So, you know, as the fight goes longer, we haven't really seen Dillashaw struggle. But well, what do I know? Dillashaw I mean, gets, I picked the middleweight division. Dillashaw gets cut, though, too. He does. I mean, he, that's, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Long the fight goes. Okay. Am I okay to move on? I think so. <laughs> yeah, everyone happy with that? I changed my answer. Okay. Uh, true or false? If Sean O'Malley true. wins, he fights for the 135 pound no. title next. I like his style. That's how I like to play yeah. the game. That's true. I mean, this is quick. Dana said it. It's true. <laughs> true. This was true because I, I, I said before, there are going to be a lot of pissed off 135 pounders if yeah. yeah. Sean O'Malley wins this fight. Yeah. Uh, question 10. How many fights away from a title shot is Benil Dariush with a win? Oh, boy. With a win? I mean, one more? <clears throat> I, he's he's got to be so close, that poor guy. I think it should be one more or get it, but I, I think it's at least two. And I think that's, he's there. That's, you think, you think so? he's there? I think he's there because he was he's on a short list and Makachev wins. So unless you think you run he should back, wait then? Unless you run it back with Oliveira, yeah. what do you do? But he won't wait. Like he's even said it, he wants to stay busy. And if they're talking about the champ going and fighting Volkanovski, if that gets set up, then he's going to have to wait at least one I more or think, wait. I don't know if Volkanovski is going to – I don't know if he's going to fight for the belt next. All right. Well, in a similar vein, not next question, how many fights is Mateusz Gamrot away from a title mm. shot with a win? Well, I mean, if he beats Benil, then I feel like he's there. Mm -hmm. He's there. Next up. Next up. I okay. mean, it could be. Pauly. That's, yeah, mm. you take that, he's taking out the number he's six fresh. and then he gets. He's fresh. Yeah, but right. I, still, I still think we've got to learn. I still think we've the world's got to learn him a little bit yeah. more and get, and get behind him. I think he's at least another fight away. I think he needs a big scalp. I think Bigger he needs, than Benio? I need, yeah, I think he needs a Gaethje yeah. or a Chandler or a Poirier. 
he needs one of those guys. Before See, you're he gets right. This is why fight. I don't like going first. Right? You're right. He needs one more. <laughs> he needs one of those big scouts. And it's going to be hard to get that mm -hmm. with these guys. Those guys, so. they don't need a fighter. Yeah. They don't have to. Yeah. Okay, last question. Buy or sell. If Manon Fierro wins, she fights Valentina. Bullet. Shevchenko next. Buy. She's fresh. She's got an interesting skill set, a lot of power. She's she's a good look for Valentina. I'll buy that as well. Yeah, I think that's a – she's exciting, fun. If she goes out there and gets a, a big win over Chikagian, then, yeah, yeah, she can jump right in there. I hate that I'm always, like, having to disagree, but we point. have to do Tyler Santos again. Mm. You have to, right? Valentina has to fight Tyler again after that last fight because if Santos doesn't get hurt, what makes us believe that anything was going to change? With which she had did the first two of the first three rounds. Is she healthy right now? What's the hold I up on that? I have no idea. Oh, I'd love to see Manon Fira get that title um, shot. I just um, cannot. I can't imagine Santos doesn't get a, a rematch. Okay, good stuff. Moving along to our next segment. I, I think it's less rapid. It makes me uh, it's called <laughs> Rent Free Moments. So you know the drill. It's the moment that fighters. lives in our minds, whether it's good or bad, but it's someone that is on the UFC 280 card. RJ, we are going first with you of this incredible cast that we have. Uh, I'm what going with uh, Felder's least favorite fighter, Matos Gamrat, <laughs> destroying Diego Vajeda's ribs. Now, in this position, right? Like, think about this. This is supposed to be a nothing strike. You've got the guy's back. Oh, I'm just gonna keep busy, oh. throw this little knee. Destroyed his ribs. Oh. Done. With a nothing, like, keep busy. Just, oh, I'm just sitting poor, here trying to do something. getting choked out while, know, while the fight's to... over as well. Breaks his lower rib with a nothing strike. Think about that. Like, that's supposed to be your safe space, right? You're on all fours. He's kind of, you know, spiral riding you. Knee, done, fight over. Mm. Yeah, no, for me, it's going to be when Charles won the belt in Houston against Michael Chandler. To see the joy on his face, mm. especially the way he jumped over the octagon, came up to everybody. You remember, for a while, Charles Oliveira trained in Houston. Mm. So it was like he won that belt at home. Perfect left hook, too. Oh, that was about as crisp as we've ever seen. He lands that, that, that those follow-up shots, finishes Chandler, jumps over, and everybody's reaching for him. Rogan, myself, and everybody's, like, excited because you have seen the good and the bad with Charles Oliveira. And you've seen him have to build himself to the point that he's the world champion. So that moment I will remember for the rest of my. He didn't jump uh, up to you. No, he was he right in the middle. <laughs> but he, he was, talked, he was but trying he, to talk to him. But talking to him, like everybody's reaching for him. And even in that, right? Even in that, everybody's reaching for him because even though he's talking to Joe, we all have seen him up and down, and you're happy for the kid. Even in that fight, Never forget it. he had to come back from the first round. Yeah. yeah. For me, for me, it's Sean O'Malley on the Contender Series because mm. that show was brand new. Sean looked like Screech from Saved by the Bell. I mean, and he absolutely, he not only launched himself, he really did launch that the show. The contenders, you needed someone like him. We, you absolutely had to, and he, he put a rocket ship behind that show. It was a huge amount. Let's take a listen. Hands down to his side. This oh, Molly! Combination. <laughs> Three-piece dinner with biscuits. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, And juice. Yep. Give me the contract. Hey, if there's one guy on this show that resembles the same, the, UFC O'Malley. the same body style, welcome to the <laughs> UFC O'Malley. As my boy Snoop, <laughs> it's Afro O'Malley. That, that that audio was of it. Snoop yelling or screaming O'Malley is like seared yeah. into my brain. I. You can it tell he was so excited. It one season. Because Snoop's great. eyes were so bloodshot. O yeah. O'Malley, so o O'Malley got to have, like, the Snoop experience, too. It was too. so wild. O'Malley oh, sure yeah, he, he got, got to go back to the trailer and have the, the, the Snoop It session. was like a, uh, what was it, like a storage crate <laughs> that, was, that had Snoop that in. Was crew that was wild. That was so much fun. What a great nuts, season. nuts, dude. <laughs> There's so many great ones, so many great fighters with lots of memories. It, this is probably a bit of a weird one because it's shared between Charles and Tony Ferguson. It's the visual of the hyperextension of the arm, like the whole performance and then when he was going for that arm bar. And then when you wrap an arm like that, it's just horrendous. To get to a point where you do that 
was just crazy. Like, this is the best submission artist in the world. And then he swims his arm there, oh, and you're like, oh my God. God. Oh, oh, oh. oh God. And everyone in the world was screaming. Look at DC. I'm trying not to watch. I don't want to see how it was. I don't know. And then when you go to that. <laughs> no, no, here's the problem. Here's the problem. You don't want to. Charles Oliver has finished 10 of 11. Yeah. That's the only guy that didn't submit. Everybody would submit to that. Oh. Everybody would have tapped. Only Tony Ferguson, because he's so durable and so tough, didn't. Yeah. Imagine, he should be, a, he should be on an 11 fight finishing, finishing streak. streak. It's crazy. Yeah. Paul, what you got? I got uh, TJ Dillashaw when he took out um, Hannah Burrell that first yeah. time when nobody. Was he not the biggest oh, underdog uh, of, in a he, title fight at I that point? I think so. I think they, Burrell was a minus 900 favorite. Dude, and not only did he win, he just absolutely oh. smashed him. And I remember everybody watching this like, are you freaking kidding? Everybody yeah, had dude. him counted out in that Bro. fight. I had fought I had fought right before him against Dan Henderson, and I was like, you know what, let's just take off, go back to the hotel. And as they started to walk, and I was like, my goodness, Dillashaw's winning. Mm -hmm. So then we all sat back down to watch the performance and go, this dude just beat him and Burrell, who at that time was like number yeah. two pound for pound. Yeah, and scary. Then you, then you thought, oh, he's lucky. Dude goes and beats him again, yeah. and even worse. Worse, yeah. <laughs> people, people who are newer to the sport don't understand how good Hennon Burrell was. Yeah. When TJ beat him, because his descent was so it was so qu so yeah. quick. But at that time, Whoa. he, he was a seemed savage. absolutely unbeatable. Huh? Oh, yeah. Wow. Right. Like as soon as that happened, it was like we need a we need a klaxon here. Uh, uh, a new segment alert, everyone. Okay. Can you, get me, can you do you the klaxon? Klaxon? Yeah, klaxon? yeah, a siren. Give me a siren. Oh, a siren. Yeah, klaxon? yeah. New segment. <laughs> okay. Okay. You've not heard that? No. Oh, maybe we nope. just have them across this the water. It's a very sophisticated piece of equipment. <laughs> um, what we're going to do here is we're going to get some preeminent advice, coaching advice mm. for some of the stars here on UFC 280. Our cast of analysts here are going to stare directly into the lens and they're going to tell some of the top fighters in the world, what they better be doing in the fights tomorrow. DC has to go first every time. He is coach. He's coach. I am. Are you, you coach DC? You coach yeah, Daniel? Yeah, coach DC. Coach? DC, yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just a great coach. And I imagine I'm a better coach than these two. You have the list of you're which fighters. Were, you're going down the list, yeah? No, you? I have no list. Okay. So I'll tell you the name. And then you're going to follow up with you better, and then it's over to you. Okay. All right. So first up, DC. Do you want to say Charles Oliveira, Oliveira, or Charles? How would you? I would, would just call him Charles. You'd call him Charles. Yeah. Okay. So Charles, you better. Charles, you better defend takedowns. You have got to stay in open space and not spend a lot of time on your back because not only are you not winning and not have able to stand up, you're losing the time battle, and the time battle is as important in this fight as anything that happens in the octagon. The fin takedowns and fight at space, Charles. Paul? To Charles? Yes, to Charles. If, or Oliveira, however you want to. You better. Charles. Oh. <laughs> you better let them hands go. <laughs> oh, well, this is good. His voice changed. You better let them hands go. Wow. Yeah, that's wow. good. That's Love good. it. Mike, wow, that was short and Follow that. And How about sweet. following that? Charles, you better be prepared to work because Islam Makhachev is going to test your... Oh. What on earth? What <laughs> Lord, oh, Lord, I'm the, the whistle. Lord, the whistle. I'm the coach here. Listen, Charles understands that he has to work, Laura. So, Charles, again, you have got to defend takedowns. You've got to stay at space if you want an opportunity to recapture your belt. This is Coach DC talking to you. Listen. We understand we got to work, Charles. we got to stay in space, though, bud. Just give me a second, okay? Charles... You better watch how you crash the distance because here's the deal. Islam Makachev's body lock takedowns, his foot sweeps, are some of the best in the division. So I know you love to crash in. I know you love to get in the pocket and make it messy. But you have to be careful. Don't you dare touch that fucking Now foot. do it all again, but in wow. Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we'll move it along, but I do like the, I do like the whistle. <laughs> I, I like the whistle. I was not ready for that. So Scared DC... Islam, oh, well, would you, Islam or Makhachev? Yeah, How would Islam, you go? Islam, Islam. Islam. Islam, you better. Islam, you better close the space, my friend. You got to get close to this guy, and you've got to get to the clinch. You've got to press him against the side of the octagon, and you got to recognize, you better recognize that you're going to have to take a little bit to get within your range. But once you're in your range, 
stick to him like glue. Give him no space and smother him, Islam Makhachev, and you will leave Abu Dhabi with the UFC lightweight championship. Coach Paul? Islam. Islam. Islam, hold on. I'm Hurry talking up. to him. No, I'm talking no, no. to him. I'm talking to him. I, I know. I, is this, hurry up. Islam. Is this how you hey. corner people? No, Islam. It's terrible. It's, your it's terrible not how you corner. It's how you give advice. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. Islam. More intensity. Shh. More intensity. I'm trying to get focused. <laughs> Better use them body locks. It sounds like you're trying to, like, get a chick oh, to date. That's it. Wow. <laughs> very. Coach Nora. Very short and sweet. Yeah. It's advice that can be used. I you get guys it. are talking I get for an hour. I get it. It's Neither long. one of them speak great English. Coach so Nora's talking. You better be careful grappling on the fence. I know you're going to want to put Little him on the fence, but here's the deal with Charles Oliveira. He can submit you while he is standing. He will take your back like he did Dustin Poirier if you're not careful. Don't touch the whistle, I almost, you see. You, I can see you, you made a point, though, but vision. you made a point. You made a point that made me stay off the whistle. Yeah. Because you said stay away from the fence, and that's exactly where he needs to be, and I almost whistled your ass, but <laughs> because you said the Dustin Poirier point, you made a great point, so my whistle's going down. Thank you. Right. This is turning into like a coach of a seminar yeah. as well. Well, I'm the best coach. <laughs> right, so Coach DC. Yes. Is it Aljo, Aljamain or Sterling? How would you feel? Aljo, Aljo. On you. Aljo, you better be willing to stand a little bit and show more comfort, be more comfortable in the stand-up. Use your strikes. Use those feints to get to those you takedowns. Must... Don't rush. Do not rush. Do not rush, Aljo, mm. and you will remain the champion. I can't whistle. Yeah, that was bad. That was terrible. <laughs> there you I go. can't whistle there you go. Al Paul. Jermaine. Yeah, oh, 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 okay. okay. Hey, Shifting characters. My, better take that back. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. We've gone it from, like, we've gone take from, it back, but we've I like that. From, uh, I like yeah. that. I Eugene like that. Behrman to James Krause, like yeah. in, in a minute here. <laughs> I'm I like showing it. my versatility. Yeah, you are. Yes. So we got anybody, coaches. Anybody and looking for an actor, an acting job out there? <laughs> Hack season three is coming back. I'm going to be back. So I'm I've looking got to, for other opportunities. I've got to find <laughs> I'm the only person that's shameless. I've got to this. find something I'm the to only plug. person that gets the shameless. <laughs> Shout plug. out to Hacks. Coach Laura. Al Jermaine Sterling, you better keep a high guard when you are striking with TJ Dillashaw because the way that he finds a dominant angle when he is entering the pocket is second to none. And we all know it's the shots you don't see that get you. Coach DC, please talk to TJ Dillashaw. TJ. You better be willing to mix in those takedowns. You cannot expect this guy to just stand with you. You got to change levels. You got to take him down and make him defensive wrestle. You cannot allow him to dictate all the grappling in this fight, my friend, if you want to become a three-time UFC champion. That was good. Man. Coach Poole. TJ, <laughs> got to use those kicks. I like how your voice kind of goes to like a Midwestern like coach. Got to get him moving side to side. I, I think he moves him side to side. We've seen him get caught. With those kind of kicks before, use those kicks. Coach Laura? TJ, you have to address the body triangle before it gets locked in because that is how Aljo controls rounds, burns the clock. What? Why? Laura, Why? Laura, Laura, please, can I say something? Can I please have a little bit of a rebuttal? No. Listen, listen. It's not about the body triangle in the moment, champ. It's about in the transition. Thank you for addressing He's got, yeah, I know, yeah. of course, you are the champion. Yeah. But Al, it's in the transitions, TJ. Mm -hmm. It's not trying to stop the body triangle. You got to be aware of everything because when you're attacking the body triangle, Aljo's attacking the neck. Yes. And when he's attacking the neck, what do you do? Defend up here. I was actually going to get triangle. to that, but you cut me off. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. It's all good. Point being, you have to address both the triangle and the... <laughs> <laughs> Laura, Laura. Wait, you oh. can't throw stuff at me. Yes, I can. I'm the coach. I'm just the coach. <laughs> I'm John Madden. I'm just the coach. Like, I'm not trying to be like... I'm just trying to help you here. Because I know that you have a no, great... No, no, I'm done. I'm done. You have a great I'm done. future in coaching. We, we, got a, we got a lot to get through here. Coach DC. I want to blue you. I want you. To, <laughs> you want to? What do you want? Yes, excuse I want me. You, yeah, I want to. Excuse your me. Ass. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to toss to myself. So Coach DC, <laughs> why, how, do you call him Jan or Piotr? <laughs> Piotr, my man, you have got to start faster. 
What? Where are these wait freaking whistles coming from? Hold up. Wait a minute. Do I have one? What is that? It's the beginning of a great song. It is. I know. I know. <laughs> but wait. Why do you have a, a, a whistle? Why do I have the belt? I mean, I know people. I know people. I got skills. I, can I mean, I'll whistle, I'll whistle your ass whistle all the way too. back to the United States of America. You literally <laughs> said, you literally said 10 minutes ago that he became champion by taking his time and making reads, and now you're changing your advice. No, 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 no. He had, he, no, 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 no. He had Laura. <laughs> Piotr. Oh, my God, I'm flustered. She has me frazzled. Oh, my goodness, she has frazzled me. I, I was not expecting her to have a whistle. Or Piotr. Wait to make. 15 minutes is all you got. Is all you got, Piotr. You have got to start faster. You cannot take your time. The slower you start, the more Sean O'Malley's in the fight. You got to agree with that. Piotr, kick that calf. <laughs> I actually, my advice to you, Piotr. Is pretty similar to DC. Is very similar to both. Piotr, you better kick the calf and you better start quickly. You see what I'm saying? We can actually <laughs> make this work, Laura. Kick the calf fast. Yes. <laughs> Don't waste time. Yeah. Can you both simultaneously blow the whistle for me right now? This segment, this segment is over. <laughs> Thank you very much. Did you feel that from the diaphragm? I, I did. You got to yeah. blow from down low. <gasps> you got to get good. that machine that TJ was using, the diaphragm. Oh, yeah. Machine. yeah. There's a lot very of good. While we, you guys we, are practicing your whistling, role. you guys at home so, we can take a look at the two men in our made. main event. I know. To prepare for the grappling challenge that Mahachev presents, Former UFC lightweight king Charles Oliveira has enlisted the services of multiple-time Iranian wrestling champion Ali Reza Noui, whose experience training overseas offers invaluable expertise. Estava morando no Dagestan quase cinco meses. Eu já lutei com Atleta que é muito melhor de Islam, Habib. Eu já sabia todo lugar do wrestling que ele é forte. Sabia que essa luta tá complicado para ele. Tudo com controle. Ele ia passar aqui. Falei que tem que pôr aí para lá. Vem ou vai ser? Ele ia passar aqui. Esse tom de choque. Que é muito rápido. Você chegou aqui. A real de tudo é o seguinte, eu não vou fugir daquilo que eu sei fazer de melhor. Quer andar pra frente? Sou melhor em pé, sou melhor no chão, sou melhor de US. Sou tudo de MMA completo. I'll be training with some Iranian wrestling guy, but I'm gonna check his grappling. You sure, you sure, you sure. At UFC 280, <laughs> the dominant grappler from Dagestan. This guy is a killer. Meets the jiu-jitsu black belt from Brazil. <laughs> in mixed martial arts competition. Islam Makacha delivers. With the UFC lightweight belt on the line. My mind, my spirit are better than his. Eu sei que eu vou se tornar como eu vou sei que eu vou sair de lá como campeão. He enters the octagon and trying to keep that lightweight championship. It's gonna be new lightweight champion from Dagestan. The guy can do it all. Islam Mahashev is the real deal. Bro, come on. Then I gotta go first. Welcome back to the chaos here inside the arena. RJ, please take over for a second. Tell us what we got going on. <laughs> That's a good one. Like, like, I'm taking an Olympian right now. Don't, don't hurt my broadcast partner. Uh, so because it's, uh, you know, pumpkin patch time, Halloween, stuff like that, Harvest Festival type stuff, we're going to do a little, like, pumpkin patch game a little bit, right? So we have four four games. First when one is... When do we is, run the marathon? <laughs> yeah. When DC's ready for it. This anyway, one, you just sorry. have to throw all five bean bags through the pumpkin. Okay. Pretty simple, right? This one, you have to knock down 
all six of these, and they all have to be knocked down. So if you knock down these top three and these are left standing, you gotta knock them all down. And I'll keep feeding you bags. Okay. The third one is you do the sack race. Put this uh, burlap sack, boop, bounce to the line, and then come back. And the grand finale, the one you guys have been waiting for, bobbing for apples. You gotta take two apples out and put it down. And it's timed. And we're just doing one at a time, right? So first team will go, then second team will go. Laura, you're the champion. With this, excuse me, excuse yes. me, sir. Question. With, with, the sack, question. with the sack, Chris, do you stay in the sack all the oh, way yes. back there oh, yes. or do you drop you do. it off? Yes, okay. you do. Got it. Yes, you do. Shimmy it on and go. Two apples, Two apples to, win. to win. Two apples to win. Okay. And it's for time, right? So, Laura, you yes. pick the teams. I'm for sure going with my man, DC. Okay. And we're going first because I don't want to mistake. subject him to the slobbery jerk. <laughs> yeah, that's just good. Of Paul yeah, so it's cool. I'll do it, guys. No worries. Okay, so be quick, like please. To do the pumpkin. Get, okay. get in and out. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. And so, as soon as you're right, done, we have Laura. She's yeah, yeah, you don't file. To all the whistle. Right? And, just and then DC. Out, that means you can start to go, and then you got to shimmy up. These are kind of to get up there. You got to take your mic off first. We'll let Miles help you. All right. It's a tough so shot. I will get a countdown when I blow the whistle. So John, where do I start then when we go? Begin. Ready. Five. Four. You start. Three. I do this one. Two. One. Oh yeah. One. Oh. Oh shit. Come on, Sango. Oh, yeah, we got to Don't oh, throw him God. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> God damn it. She hit him off her face. <laughs> Stop, DC. That was pretty, that was pretty, uh, that was pretty interesting the way that I... Two more. She's got to get one more. Uh, it's time to no point that, right? Yeah, we're not doing it. No, no I told you no not point. to put this line so far Throw back, Lord, Lord, RJ. Lord, it's Lord. very slow. Hey, 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 she's, the she's cheating over here. Complaining. Laura, I you see had... cheating over here. Oh, my God. Oh my that, God. Not that line. Just wait. You, you just, just need one, Laura. You just need one. Laura, you just need one. Get you so close. One more. One more. Oh, my God. They missed one, Laura. They missed one. That's why. Oh. kind of be on the line? I know. I won't. Yeah. Wait till someone else has to do this. It's much more difficult oh than it's God. Don, how are you at throwing? There we hey. go. Go DC. I'm not sure I'm very good. Oh, that's no, that's good. Go Lar, go Lar, go Lar. good. Where's the opening? Ah, help me. So you're doing that. Yeah. So once I get oh, this done. Oh, dear. Oh, careful yeah. out there. Oh, yeah. Minute 15. Go, DC, go. All right, two apples, DC. Oh, my God. You got this. Hey, hands up, hands up, hands up. Hands up. No, 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 he's fine, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. No, I'm not buying no for that same apple, though. He's fine. Oh, now that whistle's not so helpful, is it? <laughs> you got to get, get yourself in there, DC. Get yourself in there. Oh. Oh. This is go bad. for it. Get it. I can't believe you Laura, did it like that. that. Oh I can't do it, man. DC, you're not committed. Get in there. Get in there. You can do it. You can do it, Plug DC. It. Plug your nose. Can we change out the water? Oh, we got one. That one. One more. One more. One more. On. Got you two. Hold your breath. That's two. Disgusting. Two minutes, one Wait second. Minute. Why is the time to be? Okay. It's super sanitary, too. Yeah. Do you put in the, the, the here. chewed apple back in? <laughs> he, <laughs> oh, no. he barely tongue. Did you not get some more apples oh. at least? Look. <laughs> DC's had a snack out of those. They don't, the, the buoyancy's wrong. The buoyancy. All right, here's oh the two that they, here's the two they went. I was just trying to help. Yeah. <laughs> Now you've reduced the probability. Yeah, I, you, I know. Yeah. I let you go first. This is outrageous. It's not I get a random with pick of an apple. This is outrageous. All right. I really screwed us at the beginning. Yes, me out. I'll give you a five count. Here we go. Two minutes, one second. What you guys got to be? Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, bad. There we go. All right. That's two. Three. Three. Trying to, trying to be flash. Let's not be flash. Four. Yeah, that does Big it. shot. Oh, there we go. Ah. Oh, swing and a miss. Oh, do you have to take anything? Oh, one more. Ah. One more. Oh, there's still one. That's it. Okay. I really, I really screwed us. <laughs> 90 seconds to beat him. <laughs> this music is great. Oh, that was nearly. Let's go. Go, Paul. One. What? what? It's open. 
swimming. Two. Oh. <laughs> 47 seconds. Head bump, dead. Wow. Head bump, dead. I don't know. 47 seconds. He face down the water. How did he do that? I think it's all That's the great. swimming. Get the belt. Where's that? That belt. <sighs> Good work, Felder. Well we done. We did. Well done. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well yeah. done. Well yeah. done. I'm well not done. a great Here. loser, man. Well done. Come don't, on. Don't, just don't, do it. It don't do these things. Laura, I'm not a great loser. Don't do it. Don't do it. Sorry. May I put this on him? Makeup's running. Okay. Are you smell the towel? Like smell the towel. Thank you very much for watching us here. Oh my god! Let's put that on there. What is that? Ceremonials are later. Charles, you might you might have the real one someday. Five a.m. Pacific. I've got this. Hopefully tomorrow. We love it. Thank you for watching. DC, Laura, great. You guys at home, thank you very much. UFC 280, it's huge.